And here we are, another session of Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th edition game uh, for which I have created an entire universe and I'm proceeding to try to destroy it island by island, eventually. Uh, I'm not really destroying too much just yet. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, the uh, host? I keep wanting to say host. Uh, the GM and uh, world creator, world destroyer, and uh, and uh, killer of dreams. How about that? How about that? <laughs> Uh, slightly different setup here. We've been I've been revising the space to try to make it a little more uh, spacious, I guess. Uh, we'll we'll go with that for the moment. Uh, going around the table, introducing my players. We have starting on this side. Uh, I am Pat. I am playing Emrin Elisar, cleric of life. Hey, I'm Nax. I'm playing Zakis and Lana Porter, half elf wizard, and solving mysteries and trying to get answers. I'm playing, well, I'm playing Clark. My name is Jody, but I'm playing Clark, and he's the fighting rogue, half work, and uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm Ruth. I play Elzara, the Wood Elf Druid, and uh, yeah, I am currently updating, actually, the Facebook page, so if you guys want to go like that, it is in the links down below, and uh, there is also a connected group that we talk in, and... You guys get the chance to ask questions, and we can answer them, ish, maybe, who knows. <laughs> sure, something along those lines. Something. <laughs> uh, before we get started, yes, uh, you uh, would welcome you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, which is where you found uh, this particular video. Um, you can always reach out to us through that. You can also, like, uh, I was going to say Elzera, like uh, Marie said, uh, you can join uh, Watchers. Uh, did we? Uh, did I change the name properly to something other than Watchers of the Drowned? That's what I kept for a long time. I think we switched it to the Drowned Isles. Yeah, yeah. Just to make it a bit less morbid. Yep. And so, yeah, it's Watchers of the Drowned Isles. Yeah. So if you if you do a search for Watcher of the Drowned Isles, you'll find uh, the group, and you can join that. And there's also a page. I always forget how this works. There's a page as well. There's a page, Legends of the Drowned Isles. Okay. And please like, and uh, follow, and uh, share. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. All right. As we get back into things, uh, a little bit of a recap on what happened last time. Having successfully <laughs> discovered the embellic and extracted a part of the egg, the group headed out to the outskirts of an island of the island, rather, outside of the hum. Among the last-minute activities, in the, it, there were things like Elzera selling off found ingredients to Albatross the Brewer, Amrun confronting the Reeve about the prisoners hanging in the gibbets but discovering that they are indeed truly guilty, with one of them apparently using the distraction to escape, although why he wanted to wait until that moment baffled Amrun. The group also opened the pit covering the magic circle so Zakus could study it, but in leaving the crypt, his familiar Prina was crushed in the mechanism of the door. The group observed a strange ship in the harbor, a large ship busy with resupply and repair. Azera encountered a strangely dressed woman smoking a skull-headed pipe, presumably the captain of the vessel at the dock. Zack has returned, the library, returned to the library alone and settled back into at least part of his normal routine, saving up his energy to cast the teleportation spell again the next day. The rest of the group spent the night in the ruins of the town around the portal, briefly meeting a group of herb collectors that had wandered outside their normal range. The next day, opened, uh, next day the portals were opened for the rest of the group to return. Now, you've returned to find Vatur much as you left it. Despite your few days in a heavy, heavy, thick, jungled island where the temperature was hot, the humidity was high, in Vatur, things are pretty normal. Things are settling into an average summer day. Slightly on the cool side, summer still is slowly seeping in, uh, but nonetheless, uh, the city seems exactly as you left it before. About a week has passed in which you've had a chance to check in on a few things. Who would like to say what they did first? I can go. Okay. Sure. Um, Elzara would have checked in with um, Ferendra about the grove um, because there was talks about uh, a new grove in Vitor, uh and helped her a bit with uh, the Hippogriff Glamour Cool uh, and a bit of training there. Uh, and she would have... I now forget everything that I was doing. It wasn't a lot. I was just chilling, basically. Um, I did some uh, help with the soup kitchen, because I've been doing that. Uh, yeah. 
I think that's actually it. You have noticed a couple of things in the in those activities. One, uh, Ferendra is increasingly concerned about uh, Alexia Ferendral, the person that she works with, the council member, who is herself apparently increasingly concerned about her brother, who had returned with her after the winter was over. She hasn't spoken much about it, but she's just concerned. But she also doesn't want to pry. That's Ferendra doesn't want to, pr to run to pry. The hidden grove remains hidden. Um, it does not seem that any progress has moved on owning the property. It seems to have been owned, be owned by the city at this point as well. And it's a rundown property. Well, I would suspect that you and Ferendra would probably not worry too much about trespass. So you've scattered it a little bit. Uh, there's remnants underneath the building uh, that the grove actually goes underground. Uh, there is a natural grotto or cave which still seems preserved there. Most of it, however, filled in with stone. So we'll take some time to clear that out. Um, there is a good sense of the soil. You both get a sense that it's dormant, but vibrant, waiting for new seeds, waiting for new life. Uh, and that's that's it. Uh, and I would have also uh, gotten into contact with my dad about that uh, potion that Salazar gave me. Right, right. Uh, he's still having a hard time figuring out what it is. <laughs> I mean... Um, and the problem being is he's actually been to town. Your father's actually in town consulting with Salazar himself. And Salazar can't tell what it is. The, the increasing strangeness of Salazar is that he's increasingly less and less strange. He seems to be li living life linearly, as he said, something he's not done since he was a child. But it also means that a great amount of the, the knowledge that he once had, the wealth of his being, has also been taken from him. Uh, and he's somewhat lost. Uh, but nonetheless, he's actually going to travel to stay with your father for a while. Familiar territory, and also his father will see if the memory of making potions helps Salazar. And they're going to try to work to dissolve, just dissect what Salazar meant by that. Well, if you figure out what it does, that would be really helpful, because you did say that I would need it. Oh, I'm sure you will at some point. I just can't say when anymore. Death is a way of clearing one's mind, apparently. It, I'd never it experienced it before, <laughs> so I couldn't say. Neither have I, so <laughs> luckily. And with that, your father is back on the road again with Salazar. They've got a small cart, the one that your father has used for delivery from time to time. It really seats, well, one and a half people, uh, as well as a bit of boxes in the back. Not a huge, huge thing. Your brother was back in town, taking care of everything while your father was away. Uh, the work has begun to make sure the greenhouse is filled and make sure all the starter plants are going as well. Awesome. Okay, who's next on their I'll go. Uh, spring vacation, I guess? Clark's going to go to the market, sell some stuff, um, specifically, specifically through Bazo, the sage, um, as per some agreements previous. Um, he'd like to then spend some of his money around town uh, to gain a bit of a reputation as an adventurer and hired hand. Spread some rumors, throw some money at people, kind of okay. put the idea in people's brains that Clark is an upstanding uh, individual who's got a strong arm and is capable uh, as an adventurer, not so much as a thug. Um, let's make a persuasion roll. You will get advantage because Certainly. you're spending some money to make it right. work a little bit better. Money talks. Persuasion. Oh, that doesn't look so good. Uh, 19, it looks 19. like. Okay. Uh, with Bozo's help to make sure that the right ears right hear the right stories, mm -hmm. you seem to be making a pretty good reputation for yourself. Okay. There was a bit of it that you were building on already. Um, pr particularly the celebration... Yeah. Uh, gave you a bit of a notoriety, um, but it is also kind of adjusting that notoriety, which you're needing to do right now. Right. Uh, but you are getting a bit of a reputation around town. Okay. And uh, Bazo is increasingly proud of you, you might say. Uh, 
proud in the way of, I'm going to have more work for you, kid. Good. Excellent. Um, also, uh, Clark's going to take basically half of his money and uh, deposit it in the debt box, uh, having gone through a money changer mm -hmm. to do so. Um, Using larger denominations. Because it's less work to do yeah. it that way, basically. Yeah. Uh, it takes less work and less time. Uh, Clark's going to also uh, do a bit of carousing over the week. Um, and uh, if he has any money and he's still alive by the end of that, he will uh, do some uh, investigations about the kingfisher imposter named Leith and uh, try to track her down without leaving town. Okay. He knows that his adventurers are going to be on the next task soon, so he doesn't want to get too far away. So let's make a... Um Let's call it a performance roll. Sure. For your carousing. Uh, performance. I have a little bit of that. Uh, let's roll one dice. Uh, Twelve. Twelve? Yeah. Uh, you, you're left with about half of your money and half of the bruises you expected from the week. Okay. Uh, you made a few friends and also made a few people who are going to be keeping an eye out on you. Oh, good. Uh, to make sure that you don't wander into the wrong part of the neighborhood again. Right. Uh, and make an investigation roll. Sure. Investigation. Uh, 22. 22. Yeah. The first thing you determined is that Leith is definitely not their name. Right. It was definitely a, a fake name, a false name they were going under. Yeah, because they were working under the uh, C. The, the governor's brother's name. Yeah, uh, Corin Woodbridge, I believe. Is Wood Woodcomb. Woodcomb. Or Woodcomb. There we go. Yeah. We got there. So they were a courier for Woodcomb. Yeah. 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 Well, they under, were, under they that were, name. They under were that picking name. up the debt under that name. Right. Uh, and also uh, essentially spoofing the, the Kingfisher organization. Right. Um, you ask around town. Mm hmm. And the face turns up a few familiar uh, familiar uh, uh, or is familiar to a few people mm -hmm. uh, they had worked as a laborer in one one off office and organization uh, you ask people at that place and you, you realize they had only been there for a week but they seem to ask a lot of questions it looks as though they, they had climbed their way through an organization to find Corin to find a, a, a way in and to find out about his debt. So it's a it's a familiar technique then, that's what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of of going through and trying to, to figure out who owes a lot of money and who do they owe it to and who are they expecting to pick it up. Right. And so they set themselves up as the person that's gonna be the representative gotcha. uh, to pick it up. So is it it's good to assume that this person has some sort of uh, roguish training then? Definitely skilled. Yeah. Um, after the pickup um, no one seems to have seen them, uh, but you talk to one of the merchants, mm -hmm. uh, and the merchant tells you that, uh, in fact, it's the one, the Fletcher, okay. uh, tells you that uh, they never paid for an order of uh, throwing knives, but they picked up the knives and left an IOU. Right. Uh, that was two weeks ago. Okay. Uh, and you also talked to one of the guards. And the guard, after a bit of persuasion, mm -hmm. because guards don't make a lot of money. They can. Uh, mm -hmm. But this one made a little bit more that day. And okay. let you know that they saw that person leaving the, uh, i got to check which gate that is, but leaving basically the easternmost gate. Okay. Which goes around the south, uh, the south exit of the city, the south around the mountainside. And that was about a week and a half ago. So they had hit out for a half a week after taking the, the knives and then booked it out of town. Okay. Uh, do I have the? Yeah, I don't have the I don't have the name of the gate there, but basically the southbound gate, which leads uh, to the southern pass leading around the mountain. Okay. Um, the other weird thing that you get, and one of the reasons I keep using they, mm -hmm. is. The face and the name start digging up both male and female uh, people. Right. Leading you to believe this person has the ability to at least deceive people, if not outright change their form. Okay. But you're pretty sure there's something common about it. 
Uh, all of them describe a small clasp, silver clasp that held their cloak in place. Uh, it seemed to be silver, fancy, no one took a close look at it, but it did have a small red gem in the center. Okay. Uh, does that description uh, jive with anything Clark has seen recently? Uh, like, recently in terms like of... Like, for instance, the Silver League of a Queen or some other uh, organization? It does. It definitely does not jive with the Silver League. Okay. They do use similar emblems to that, right? Um, but they are very careful to have no one know, right. uh, or the association, or very very few. You're in the business, as they say. So, so they have a they have a favorite item. Th they have, yeah, yeah okay. and they often leave it as a calling card more than wearing it. Okay. All right. Okay. And otherwise, the sales go as expected. Boswell's very happy to see some of the things on his list fulfilled. Okay. And he has people that are very ready to receive those things. Right. Uh, so uh, all in all, it was one set of clothing. There were some knives. Some magical knives, a set of magical clothing, and then whatever we gathered that we didn't want, we wanted okay. cash. We can, he'll do I don't that. remember if the rings were included in that. I didn't do it, but okay. we can do that later if you want. Okay. Zakis or Amrun? We might have to do like the last few days together, Dukas or both traveling yep. to, Farha to, Har to Farhaven together. Uh, I can go next. Sure. So I was going to, according to what I sent you, yeah. Bring the star, we'll re receive the star from Unruin, bring it to Nala, before I bring it to Emerald. Just because, like, Zakis does admire Emerald, but I mean, you just didn't entirely trust him. There's like a few red flags that came up, like the trap. Mm -hmm. That was by the teleportation circle. So at the end of the last session, you'd actually met with Nala, who met you at the the yeah. gate. Um, and she had actually taken possession of the Umbelic, mm -hmm. and she was starting to work with uh, Garbo. Yeah. So I'll go meet up with them with the power source, and ask one or them, one of them or both to accompany me to meet Emerald. Mm -hmm. With the items. Um, both of them will actually accompany to, to meet uh, Emerald. Uh, Garbo's fascinated, but he's also... From the descriptions you would have given of the uh, the shard of the egg, um, he's very very cautious about leaving it outside of the lead, which you can mm. actually see the lead that it was wrapped in has smoothed over entirely and is starting to pool. So you kind of shift it every once in a while so it doesn't pool entirely or doesn't get too thin on one side. Uh, it does seem to be affecting the lead, um, but not uh, not no not noticeably uh, getting through it just yet. I'll briefly mention my insanity adventures while I was in the hive. And yeah, I, I will mention, like, actually, no, I'll just wait until. I'll recount our adventures, but I'll just wait until we're with Emerald. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Emerald would also give you one of the vials of uh, the drink that they had that right. made the uh, thing less useful to give to Nala as well. Okay. Uh, also, he gives you the chainmail that we found from the Green Guard right. guy uh, to give to Adrian. Okay. Um, unlike the previous opportunities to meet with Emerald, it's much, much easier when he's noticeably nearby. He has not moved back into the uh, library permanently, however. Uh, he seems to be still taking up residence over in the Temple of Mnemosyne. And he still seems to have limited time in which he can speak. About an hour is all he can afford. He do, do, do meet him in his office, however, as he makes the trip over. Okay. Um, and he's very uh, glad that you've returned and returned safely. We'll narrate this rather than doing it moment by moment. Um, as you explain, he, he actually seems to be surprised about the trap. That was not something he was aware of, nor was he aware of the hum. Uh, it seems as though he had not been there, as he puts it, in hundreds of years, and had nearly forgotten about um, the... Well, actually didn't know the details of what there was at the Tower of Awaz. Um, apparently either, others <laughs> others had uh, uh, built the tower and they had been harnessing this power source. He didn't know it about, it about it directly. It was another group of, ma of mages who were working on it. Um, the uh, Garibald was excited to work on it. Nala is as excited as Nala ever seems to be. Um, in this case, maybe a little bit more excited uh, to to see what this can do. Um, 
but uh, do you present the embellic to yeah. the mural? Yeah. He yeah. looks it over um, and um, kind of turns it over in, in his one arm um, and nods, um, asking Garbo what they should do. Um, and Garbo's suggestion is if what you have said clears out and they figure out a little bit more about how to use it, um, they're going to build a tower in the center of the library grounds. And the embellic will actually sit at the top of the tower. Will it be safe? We'll have to make sure there are extra protections around it, uh, or that's what they would indicate. Um, uh, and that uh, Nala comes out and says, it's, it's powerful. It's perhaps the most powerful artifact she has seen. Uh, and she describes it specifically with that word, which kind of surprises you. Um, artifact is not a word that's thrown around lightly. Mm. Uh, artifact is more than simply a built item or constructed item. It is an item of extreme importance, uh, and often describing things that were gifts of gods, although this was clearly manufactured. Um, but they're going to put it in the tower as a defensive uh, thing. Over the week, as you get a chance to work with the other two uh, on it, uh, Nala helps you decipher more of what the, the features are. Um, once the power source goes in, she believes that it will stay dormant and protected within the embellic. The embellic itself seems to be made of extraordinarily heavy material, probably meant to contain the power of the shard. In order to activate the embellic, it will require three arcane um, controllers. Three people with arcane knowledge. Once activated, it can be controlled by a single one. It has numerous powers. You had deciphered some of the terms that were on it, but not necessarily the powers. And over the week, I'm assuming you're going to spend some of the time with this, and plus with both Garbo and Nala helping yeah. you, it's a little easier to determine some things. Um, in its protection mode, it generates magic missiles to defend itself. So it itself has its own protection. Uh, in the sealing mode, uh, it will close portals. Um, it specifically looks to be reinforcing this plane of existence, is the other way to put it. In its confusion mode, it will envelop an area with a deep penetrating fog. In its imprisoned mode, it creates a wall of force around an area. and. Judging from the amount of power that, that Garbo figures the, the, um, the shard has, you'll be able to cover the entire library. Uh, in its defense mode, uh, it generates air elementals to defend itself. Given what the others described of what the, how the tower operated, how the Tower of the Waz was operated, it probably was in that mode. Okay. Uh, in its animation mode, it can imbue uh, high quality armor with the power to move around, essentially generating animated armor. Uh, in its concealment mode, it generates a swirling wind around a building about 100 feet in diameter and 200 feet tall. This was probably also the other activated mode when you first found it. Noting that you did not find the embellic with power it did not have anything but, but dust inside. So those lasted beyond the Embellic's own existence. Granted, nothing probably touched it for some, some time. So it's probably a good thing that it didn't have power when they went to fetch it. <laughs> probably. That's the, yeah, the depowered version already had enough. And, and uh, the final one, I think you had not figured out... Um, so we have seven right now, so there needs to be two more? Uh, yes. Sorry, there was a simple one, which is Minor Protect, which is literally protecting in the room that it's in. Um, generating magic missiles 
to self to protect itself. Okay. Um, and the recover mode. That one is the one which was scratched off. Um, it is believed that the smoke which will come out of that particular spout has restorative properties. Exactly what those property are, properties are are hard to decipher at this point. Um, okay. So, you have a good idea what the Ambella can do. Uh, effectively, if, if there is a fight that's taking place in the library, there will be lair actions for the library to do. Nice. If the Ambellic is activated. So it's pretty much like turning three keys to arm the nuke. It's level two. five spells. Okay. A level five spell slot has to be extended, expended by three arcane okay. casters. Uh, so does that mean an arcane caster or a caster who's trained in arcana? Uh, an arcane caster. So yeah. it has to be a, someone who studies. Wizards typically are the yeah, ones that would wizard do this. Wizard or sorcerer. Sorcerer can do it. Yes, can help, yeah. Access to a and certain kinds of warlocks can too, yeah. technically. Okay, okay. Given it was something that was probably built by wizards, it's not, not surprising that they would yeah. have <laughs> their own abilities to do it. But that's what you discover about the Alembic. Okay. Uh, it is indeed powerful. And the uh, Gerbo is going to design the tower, which is going to sit in the middle of the library grounds. Kind of that big open spot where you actually fought before is the center of the library grounds. So is it only me, Nala, Imril, and Gerbo right now? Uh, no. Uh, um, uh, actually, bards would also count as arcane casters. Um, the uh, the uh, Amakir sisters okay. are both capable. I mean, like that—that's discussing right. Oh, the no, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's been kept basically between the two. I think. I sorry, I, I misunderstood. I'll mention at this point. Uh, if we can be sure that there can be uh, no um, ducts related to shenanigans. I won't let any ducts go in the damn building. Good. Uh, they will have to loop in Adrian. Yeah. And probably Holmara will also know because it's literally in her front yard. Yeah. Um, and my Leah and Thea, hopefully. Probably all of the submeisters will end yeah. up knowing at the, at the uh, by then. Because, like, Zekas really wants to tell my Leah about all of this, but it's like... Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> And he feels really bad. <laughs> she would inquire as to what was going on. Mm. What do you tell her? Uh, when is this exactly? Like when I'm walking back from that meeting? Sometime during that week, yeah. Because she'd be happy to see you back again. You seem to have a bit more, bit of a tan. Mm -hmm. yeah, tan You're also you taller than you looked than you were before. She's weirdly looking straight over at you because she was slightly taller than you before. Yeah. Actually, she's looking up at you. Technically, I'll yeah, mention she grew a bunch. that we. Had a meeting with Emerald, and she kind he of had a little standing on her tiptoes to kind of look more even to you, mm. uh, maybe subconsciously. But yeah. I'll mention we had a meeting with Emerald. More details will come as they become available, and we went to a place where there was a lot of uh, wild magic at work. And I'll kind of like crouch down ten inches, back up, slouch you know? a little bit, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which explains the additional height. Okay. I'll stand glad to be back. I'll and catch up on my work, I swear. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll catch up on my work, and when I leave, I'm probably going to like bang my head against the door. So. <laughs> it's a little hard to adjust to the uh, the, the, the new height uh, <laughs> considerably. Um, probably one of the worst things is having to adjust the way you put your feet up on your desk when you sit back, because you're slow a bit longer than you were before. <laughs> um, but she, uh, she looks at you suspiciously, but as soon as you mention that it's something that Emerald has been working on. She kind of backs off a bit, but she gives you a look. It's sort of a sly look, as in, we will talk about this later. And I'll nod to that look, because I do want to talk about this later, but she probably knows, like, knowing Emerald, that I'm probably not allowed to talk about whatever it is. Okay. Um, the I'll rest of that week? Mm -hmm. Sorry? Or? I was going to... No, I still had the tarsal look. Okay, so... But I was going to ask her, like, if she wants to, whenever we have, we both have free time, to, like, keep studying that book together. Yeah. She has been continuing to, to read and trying to interpret a couple of the other books she'd left behind. Nice. Um, she's having some considerable difficulty and would like to schedule more sessions with you yeah. to, to do that. Make a insight roll. Uh-oh. 12 mm -hmm. plus... 5? 2? 17? Okay. Um... There's a little more urgency in the way she wants to have another meeting with you, as if she has missed your presence 
Uh, even though you've been only gone for a few days. And there's something in the last look that she gives you. Maybe it's because she's now having to look up to you because you're taller than her, or maybe there's something more to it. Uh, there's a, a, an amused look in her eyes, uh, almost playful, which for her, who has been the heavy boss for you for quite some time, is a little bit unusual. Okay. The rest of the week? I'm going to resummon Prina. So okay. I'll need. Can we just assume that I've been to the uh, magic shop and bought a. Mm -hmm. As long as you pay for it. Yeah, so minus 50. The appropriate coals and, and necessary. Oh, that's Hmm? You, prob 20. you probably have the brazier. Yeah, I'm just wondering how much the brazier costs. I thought it was fifty. Well, you probably have the brazier because you summoned printed yeah, before. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. It's oh, the it's the uh, it's the incense you have to pay for, okay. which I think is fifty gold worth. Okay. I thought it was only twenty. But you spend a bit of time. Yeah. And the the smoke kind of wisps up, and one of the wisps takes a slight more of a form, and <laughs> coughing. And somewhat uh, uh, stretching out, almost as though trying to stretch muscles that got too crushed before, uh, Prina appears. Uh, ten gold. Ten. ten, okay. Prina, welcome back. You did great back there. <sighs> I don't feel great. I still feel like a eh, little kink in the neck. Yeah. It was very small and very... Did you... I brought you back. You look taller. Yes, I am. Wild magic is... Wild? It's yes. Mm. I was trying to think of a better word, but wild definitely defines it perfectly. She kind of flies over. It's good to see you, and grabs under your nose. You as well. For the traditional hug. Yeah. I try not to sneeze. Okay. <laughs> and then she flies into the pocket on your uh, new robes, which I don't think have the same kind of pockets in them. Are they bigger? Uh, they're well. They adjusted when you put them on, actually. Um, but doesn't don't have the same sort of interior pockets as your other one did, so she kind of flies off. And, uh, there's a bit of a tickling sensation as she flies up your sleeve, finds a spot to hide. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, what else I was going to do too? Yeah. Stupid emerald that's already been done. Yeah, I was going to look up Pichero in the um, Elwyn's Guide to Demons. Right. I will so go Google the book. <laughs> that is a yeah. That is a uh, uh, a role I believe it describes in that book. Mm -hmm. I think. Just let me find it. It doesn't use one of the charges though, does it? It's not a charge based thing, I don't okay. believe. But look at the description of it to tell for sure. Once per day, the book may be used when identifying a demonic species or even an intimate or even an individual demonic being. So it gives advantage. So that's once per day. Yep. Advantage. Well, there's a four and a five. Can I use the collar of brilliance? Uh, I'm assuming that's Arcana. The collar gives you advantage. Oh. Yeah, so if you already have advantage, you don't get yep. it again. So there's a five yes. and a four plus... That was Arcana, right? Uh, what it should say in the description. Mm -hmm. And if not, then I will correct it. I think it's a history roll myself, but... Skills, Arcana, and History. Yeah, that was yeah that's what it grants. grants. Uh, it, it just says not. gives advantage. Okay. So it's... So History would be the main role for that? Oh, okay. So History is plus nine. So 14. Yeah, 14. 14. You do find a reference to Peturo. Uh, Peturo translated from Old Elvish. Uh, the word actually means petrified. Um, it doesn't have a lot of detail on it. Um, an old entity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes referred to as the Lord of Sorrow. Sometimes referred to as the Master of Deception. And also referred to as the creator of chaos. Uh, an ancient demon lord, it's what it suggests. Mm -hmm. Of considerable power. And you got a 14? Yeah. Okay, that's the only thing in that particular uh, section. So I can try again on, on the next day if 
if there is another day available. That is the entry on that demon okay. in that book. But given that additional information, that may be ability to find it elsewhere because okay. you didn't find it under the name Petura before, but this find this now ties it to those other titles. Gotcha. And because I'm at the library, I can just like go do some research. Is that what you're going to research? Probably, because I mean, I'm pretty sure we're going to come up against this asshole again. <laughs> or are you going to work on the embellic? Uh. Do I have time to do both? No. What day is it right now? Uh, basically, you spent three out of the out of the, or sorry, four out of the seven days. Okay. So yeah, I'll go to the umbelic then. Okay. It's more about pressing. Okay. Issue. That will speed their progress along, yeah. basically, for them to be finished with it. Um, the uh, the fifth day is when Gerbo has what he believes is a decent container to transfer the shard into. Okay. Um, however, he is concerned. Because what you've described of the hum means that it is dangerous to be exposed. Yep. And he's very worried about exposing it here at the library. So he's he's got a scheme. It's going to take him about two weeks to build the room to contain it, to work on it safely. And I'm assuming I would have described what it felt like to have it in my hands, too. Mm -hmm. Just so they know what to expect. <laughs> um, with Nala's help, he's going to be building the room. Because Nala okay. is better at physical construction of magical uh, magical spaces, basically. Mm -hmm. um, working, kind of putting aside the research she was doing in her own laboratory. Um, which, you know for her, almost everything else gets pushed aside for her research. So, obviously, she considers to be uh, very important. Okay. Um, why don't we go to Amrun, because the end of your week is going to tie in with his. Yeah. You could let him know that you do know one person who was never affected by it. <laughs> maybe it. Maybe you got to believe in good old religion. I mean, I almost <laughs> wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, stupid and forgot yeah, I wasn't the to that, that item was, anymore. <laughs> I'll briefly mention that as, I, I'll, as I'll mention this. Um, I'll, I'll also mention that Queen Mellifera thought I was special, and that's why I was like more affected. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you mentioning that to? Hmm? Just all of them. Okay. Yeah. Well, the submisters, I mean. Emerald yeah. dismisses the idea that Amrun isn't at all special in relation to this magic item. Uh, make an insight check. Well, Emerald did what? Can you just can you just repeat that because I wasn't like. Uh, he dismisses the notion that uh, Amrun is in any way special with relation to this item. <laughs> Two. Okay. So plus five, so seven. It's rather abrupt, but you don't read anything else into it. Yeah. I think he's just like he just, he just doesn't like Amrun because of the whole like deal with Sosoro. <laughs> Hard to say. I believe you didn't make that inside check. No, I didn't. <laughs> Uh, I'm Rune. Oh, right. Well, our album made it. Okay. I had our album Facebook right. open to the thing that I was okay. doing, and then uh, I closed the phone, and now Facebook uh, will get back to it. <laughs> so I'll go off what my uh, I had in memory. I have it um, listed here in front of me if you, if you want prompting. Well, uh, the first thing he did, like I mentioned before, was gave some of the stuff to him to hand over to Nala. And... Uh, He's happy when uh, Zakis actually does hand it over instead of going crazy and trying to rule the world. Apparently he didn't uh, keep it in his pocket. It never mm. even crossed my mind. Like, jeez. <laughs> um, <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> you get kind of taken over by the globy thing that twice. <laughs> um, no, I was proud of you. You gave it away. Um... After that, he would uh, he would have taken the eleven uh, refugees that we have with us mm -hmm. uh, and headed back to the hotel where his okay. followers are staying. Um, the elegant pony, which I think that was probably pretty much have rented out for the last two months. Uh, well, I only had like seven or six people. St I think seven, including me, uh, staying there before. But then this will be like I'll be getting one of their bigger rooms to. You pretty much are Good filling rooms. the place up. They're happy to yeah. have the regular business, although some of their res regulars have stopped coming in because it's mm. too crowded. Um, yeah, because there's 19 of us total there now. 
Um, uh, over the first couple of days, uh, he gets uh, some regular traveling style clothes for the refugees, since they mostly have just old, tattered stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, they're also probably needing an adjustment in clothes, because what they were wearing was as little as they can get away with in a jungle. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he would also be putting in an order for a half a dozen uh, fine quality robes to be made. Uh, mm -hmm. They'll be going to his acolytes. Uh, ex I know what they will look like. I just have to find out from you what leanings the particular people have uh, towards healing or diplomacy or guarding or that sort of thing. Okay. Um, uh, he also uh, he went to the dude that was making the caltrops and picks those up. Um, he goes to. He spends a little time looking for the best uh, weaponsmith to make some superior quality darts. Uh, and as you mentioned, probably ends up with the the guy that she had making. The Fletcher arrows. is pretty good at that sort yeah. of thing. Um, he makes wooden darts, not metal darts. W w metal tips. So they're a lot lighter than they would be. And they're high quality. Sure. Um, Most of what he works with is wood. Yeah. His products. Hevels are a stamp of approval. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, uh, let's see what else. Oh, he goes <laughs> to the uh, magic materials place again and places an order for uh, a bunch of stuff that we talked about for various materials that the will be going into the group uh, use uh, area plus some ivory strips so I can actually do that legend lore spell next time I get a chance. Those cost double, as I mentioned uh, before you, because they don't have ivory here very much. No problem. Um, uh, what else was there? That's not yet. Um, I'm trying to think what else there was. Uh, he does, uh, he will go and try to make a meeting with uh, Alistair Woodcomb. Alexander Woodcomb. Yeah, Alistair. Alistair, yeah. okay. Um, uh, to talk at some point during the week. Uh, and then he'll, basically he'll stay in town uh, again uh probably every evening or something going around to the different med like clinics and whatnot and healing people as much as he can. Uh, mornings and afternoons would be talking with his acolytes and with the refugees uh, to, uh, he wants to get the refugees, uh, help them get acclimatized and uh, he's Interested in uh, employing them if he can if he can get a building it'll need fixing up, and if they'd like to work on that uh, until they get used to where they are. Then okay, uh, let's deal with a couple of things first of all. Okay, um, make a persuasion roll to get the meeting with Alistair. Okay, and what do you say the meeting is about? Um, I said the meeting is about. Uh, I would like to start a temple to Polexia. Um, I think it could be good for the city. Uh, in particular, Polixia has helped save the town a couple of times already. Okay. I think uh, be it having maybe a public uh, temple uh, in here could be uh, good for things. Okay, so the, the clerk simply writes it under building administration, Yep. religious um, donation question mark. Uh, let's see. Hmm. At a 17. Okay. Uh, you've got a um, meeting scheduled for a week from now. Okay. Don't be late. Um, seems like they're dealing with a lot of issues dealing with, uh, with repayment after the food distribution mm -hmm. that they needed for the winter time. Yep. Uh, and maintaining the current uh, schedule. And also paying the bill for the massive number of mercenaries who are brought into town. Yep. Now... 
At what point is a week from now? Where am I during the week of downtime that it's going to be? This is basically the, uh, towards the beginning. Um, so it'll be the about so it'll be j sometime after two I or three days so. after this week is over. Yeah. Okay. Um, can't remember anything else. Well, uh, one of the things you did uh, that both you and Zakis have made a point well, of. Yeah. Yeah, there were, there's gonna. Uh, I was saying before I go to. Uh, well, no, this is before okay. Farhaven. Is that you dropped off the chainmail mm -hmm. that you found from the Green Guards? Yep, I gave that to him. And uh, Adrian is quite surprised to to see it. Um, yeah, we can do that together, I guess. Oh, I I would do that as soon as we got there, and then I'm helping get the uh, refugees out yeah. of here before you guys start putting tags on them. Um, also, yeah, that was another thing that when you returned to the library, you discovered that they had placed a, a new uh, a new mechanism to try to keep uh, the place more secure, which is they have little magical rings that they attach physically onto people's bodies, um, which help to alleviate part of the process. And also links to their soul. Uh, we presumably. Told, that's we were told that. Yep, yep. yep. No. That was what a guard told you, whether that's what they actually do or not, it's hard to say. Um, thought it was I think one, it might have been Nala, but yeah. even then, uh, whether that's what was actually happening or what she told you. Um, but Adrian is very surprised to see these. In fact, uh, takes the, the chain mail from you, um, kind of skeptical at first, but as he examines it and looks over the insignia of the Green Guard and looks over the quality of the armor, uh, his face uh, becomes more reverent of it. Um, and for the normally very hard-surfaced, business-like Adrian, there is almost a, a, a crack in that wall for a moment as he kind of takes this in. Um, these are some of the founding members of the Green Guard, or were, long, ago. long ago, lost, hundreds of years ago. Their names hold legendary status we we are initiated with stories of what they have done but their end was as much a mystery to us as to anyone I would never have expected you to find them there of all islands we've also found the hammer of Sir Romer Silver Shard and the spear of Sir Carlo Capno I would like to take a look at those as well I believe Paul is in possession of the hammer I doubt he'd, he would mind letting you look at it in our uh, centaur friend, Arrow has the spear. She's around. I'm sure. I'm sure she wouldn't mind looking at it either. Are they? Do they date from the same age as uh, the armor of Vania Leorel? They were all uh, among the. They set the standard for which we try to live up to. But after they left, our organization was scattered. We now know each other briefly and do not see each other much at all. I know of only three others of our order that even I've met, although they themselves have said they've met others. Is it acceptable for you to give their names? No, I'm afraid not. Yeah. Understood. Our order has become more secretive. <laughs> After the time of these three, Many of our order were either lost or tempted away. Do you know what mission they all went on? No. Or who would have sent them on this mission? Like I said, I had no idea they would be found in an island like that. If we find any additional details about these three, or the Green Guard in general, I'll definitely let you know. If you have time sometime, maybe I'll tell you some of the stories that I know. That would be delightful. But I will... I will need some time and I have a lot of business to attend to. In the meantime, if I can hold on to this, I would be grateful. Certainly. Everyone, this is this okay? I'm not there. Oh, I thought... Right, okay. I thought you were with me. Never mind. No, I just gave it all to you. And okay. Go for it. <laughs> Except in fancier words. Mm -hmm. um, we I didn't want to get tagged, so we went. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he tells you that he's going to speak to Paul and Iroh as well. Um Although if you can speak to them on his behalf to let him know that he's going to yeah. talk to them, that would probably help. Yeah, I'll do that also and explain why. Um, 
Uh, Paul, you know, is actually going to be going back to work with Holmara, mm -hmm. um, and he uh, is getting fitted with one of the rings. Uh, Iroh is not. She's staying outside the, uh, the elegant pony as before. You may want to message me to find her. Yeah, I'll do that. She tends to walk around a lot. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm in really no hurry to see her, but Amrun has a better relationship with her, so sending. Hey, can you tell Arrow that Adrian would like to look at the spear? Thanks. Sure, I'll see if she's willing to. Okay. So, towards the end of the week, Amrun, you're making a trip up to Farhaven? Mm hmm. And Zakas is going to go with you? Yep. Yep. I did find out how on the Facebook app to find that thing, so. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Ella is coming with us. Uh, I will insist on that. She does not want to go, but she I defers to your leadership because she's already pledged to it. Well, sort of. She's hanging around, but she's not actually part of the church yet. Nope, but she's pledged to follow you. Yeah. Uh, I say, I'm not, like, I'm not going to be leaving you there, but uh, your grandmother might like to speak to you for a little while. It's been a few weeks. For the first time since Ella joined up with you, there is a hint of the young girl as she actually is of her age. There's a stamping of the feet. There is a, a bawling of the fists. There is a, a hard look that crosses her face. But as you insist... Um, there is also a deep breath, an intake, a discipline you do not expect from a 14-year-old girl. And she settles in and nods somewhat resolutely. Um, if any of the others that were up there before want to come as well, just to visit friends, then they can come as well, but I'm not... Uh, when you assemble the disciples to together and kind of bring them in, most of the... Most of the refugees are not as interested in that particular element of, yeah. of it. They kind of look at it, and you kind of get the sense that they look at it somewhat as the same as what they had before, which is there's a totalitarian leader at the top that, that wants you to join the organization. You technically don't have to join the organization, but it's hell if you don't. So they're kind of shy about being part of any group. Mm -hmm. um, I do make it clear none of them has to join anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and a few of them kind of take it that way, but, but many of them are just mm -hmm. sort of like, no, we want to get back to civilization, yeah. uh, and are starting to look for work. Um, your disciples that are there are, frankly, bored. Um, they haven't really got any idea what to do. You're not offering a lot of direction other than do good, which they have no idea what to do for that. Some of them have started volunteering for the guard. Some of them have started working in uh, different shops as apprentices. Mm -hmm. Um, um well, that's part of what he's been talking about them, or talking to them about uh, as well uh, during that week and, and before that is basically how can we help people, um, that sort and of thing. Many of them are asking, actually once one person asks, the rest of them also chime in asking about when are we going to the Serene Temple? Well, once I get it, enough time to, we can go back down there for a while. I stay quiet, but I'm hearing this conversation, and it's like, I can get this the movie. <laughs> um, we were down there for a couple of weeks uh, before. Very, very briefly, though. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, fact, you spent more time in a quain, I think, than you did actually at the temple. But No, uh, there was a couple of weeks that we spent down there, but we just never went, uh, we never did the session that was going to cover that. Right. Um, but... Uh, um, so yeah, I, at some point I would like to go down there and see if I can bring, um, uh, Damon, Dresk. Damon yeah. Dresk? Uh, bring Damon back up with us. He's a ghost. Mm -hmm. um, you do know Maybe that Damon cannot know. leave the confines of the temple. Um, well, I know that we haven't been able to yet. Yeah, well, he's never been able to. Mm -hmm. um, but that's far off in the future, potentially. Yep. Uh, I tell her, right now, um, I have a meeting soon to talk about getting a temple built here. Once we have a place of our own, uh, then we can see about working out of that. Um, but uh, that we that meeting is not until next week. Uh, 
Make a persuasion roll. Mm, 13. 13. They seem mildly disappointed with that. They're looking to do something, and they're looking to you for leadership, and you keep telling them to wait. So they seem to be a little bit disillusioned. Well, I'm also telling them to actually go out and do stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I do ask them, what do they want? What are they looking for from this? Direction is what most of them come out. Half of them are uh, the third or fourth child of uh, fairly wealthy people looking for something to do, looking to find a, a name for themselves, looking to build something. Um, most of the rest are people who were looking for hope and saw you as a beacon of hope, mm. sometimes literally, uh, but have no idea what that looks like. Um, they don't know how to worship Paluxia. They don't even know the rituals. They've you've taught them a little bit, but they're... Yeah, well, they know as much about the rituals as I do, uh, barring the actual casting thing. Um, I am trying to train them as well in meditation. Okay. Uh, and in attempting to reach out, because that's all Emran really can think of for how they might gain Paluxia's attention. Okay. Uh, he has no... He's a... I'm not a wizard. This isn't something that can strictly be taught. Uh, and unfortunately, I was not trained either. Um, actually, something he will uh, ask about, he'll probably go and ask Zinzalor uh, near the door just to go in and, and ask about it. Mm -hmm. um, if any of the clerics from uh, the Temple of Namazani uh, would be willing to come and talk with him and his acolytes about what they do and how they got there. Hmm. Okay. Um, um, something he meant to do before, but I never Zinzalor would be surprised at the request. Normally, the, the, the few churches, the few temples that exist don't really get along not that they're animosic uh, have much animosity mm. with each other they just have very vastly different practices uh, um, yes and Emerson says yes I, I only know of two temples in this town one of them's a restaurant and the other one's a maze so I'm not surprised at that but um, your or you serve the deity of knowledge and I think knowledge and clarity is what uh, myself and my acolytes I guess you could call them uh, would need um, uh, and Zinzalor tells you I will speak to Miyazana and your request is interesting I'm sure she'll find it so as much although I've got to warn you I'm pretty good at the at the talking to folks and um, I won't try to poach the people that follow Paluxia from you but some might find the way of Namazni more accommodating oh certainly I have no desire to uh, keep anyone with me who wants to be elsewhere hmm. uh, they know that their path is their own if their path is to hang out with me then uh, I will do what I can to help them, but this is... I was, I was not taught anything of this, so I'm not sure where to start with them. I see. Well, you're probably the strangest uh, follower of a deity I've ever met, which is not... A, not, an, uh, not uh, 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 well, really, take it as a compliment, I suppose. Mm. As I said, I will speak to Miyazana, and we'll see what we can do. Perhaps some of our great knowledge can also help yours. Thank you very much. And maybe another time we'll have a debate on uh, shepherding your church. Sure. Emrin has no idea what sheep have to do with this, but <laughs> uh, he's open for a talk. Um, sheep, it'll make a nice addition, addition to your horses and your chickens. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm probably going to get some because I, I do want to have an animal spot. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah, I think the next thing up was the trip to Far Haven. Okay. No trip. Are we there yet? So, the passage to Far Haven is simple, simple this time of year. 
The weather is mild, cloudy, but not a heavy rainstorm or snowstorm as you experienced before. Yep. Firehaven itself is fairly uh, empty. Um, the major tourism seasons are in the fall and in the winter. So this is a rebuilding and a restocking time for them. Uh, but otherwise, Farhaven seems much as you've seen it before. Um, you stop in to see uh, Thylestra yep. or Idea. Uh, well, yeah. Um, I'm taking the coach and all of the horses because uh, uh, they might like a bit of a walk. Um, actually, first thing is he's going to stop in to see Gort. Okay. Uh, to uh, give him the 550 gold he owes him uh, and an extra 50 gold for the delay. Uh, he's happy to see you and even happier to see the money. Uh, he hopes that the beer has been gathering a good reputation in far in, uh, in uh, Vatour. Oh, certainly. Uh, I believe people liked it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I have some plants you might be interested in. Uh, I'll pull out a few cobs of black corn. Uh, and I say, we found this in uh, on an island, uh, jungle island. Um, somewhere, a dwarf there was making it into a, a beer, an ale, or something. Actually, it was a spirit. Spirit, there we go. Um, that uh, seemed to have some protective properties against a uh, a magical thing that was going on uh, there. Um, oh, he, uh, I thought you might be interested in... Uh, how much of it do you have? I have 12 cobs. Okay. How much are you giving him? Mm, four. Four? Okay. Um, I said just do with them as you will. I thought they might prove of interest to you. Um, I don't think the spirit tasted terribly great, but uh, it might have some interesting results. Uh, if so, I'll give him the name of the island. Uh, forget what it was. It's but, a rock. Uh, it's a rock. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we'll be going back there for like, a while or not, but uh, someone may be going there. So I'll see if I can convince you the farmers to see if this will seed. Hmm. Yeah, could be quite good for that. Um, but anyways, uh, Thank you for the uh, the help before. Mm -hmm. uh, he accepts it, and he will have more deliveries. He needs deliveries of grain at the moment, if you're interested. I, yeah, I don't know how much uh, uh, merchanting I'll be doing for a while, but uh, I can let people in Vitor know if anyone okay. wants to send some stuff up. Um. Then I'm going to be looking around for... Actually, I'll ask Gort, because, I mean, he uses utensils of a sort. Uh, where would I go to get the best cooking utensils? Hmm. I'm interested in learning how to cook, and I want to start off with the right stuff. He tells you that you can find really good ones at the supply store that's here, but they will be very expensive. Uh, make a uh, actually no don't make a persuasion roll because you just paid him uh, he will tell you that the shear water actually is where they're made and they're sold okay. here for higher amounts so if you go in directly to shear water you could actually get a better price okay well thank you very much okay uh, how far away was shear water shear water was literally at the bottom of the hill so you got fire haven which is uh -huh. the top of the mountain and this and the the sort of actually it's yeah. really an s uh, is that escal like a day's travel uh it was a few, a few hours, hours. Okay, we probably don't have time to go there. Um, well, maybe actually, no, because it's. I'm getting up there at least at the earliest sometime in the afternoon. I'm gonna have to leave the next day to get back down in time. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I I don't think I'll have enough time to get there, uh, and so I just ask where the local place is. So. Yeah. I don't have the name off to, off the top of my yeah, head, but that's it's fine. Um, Normally, superior cooking utensils would be 100 gold, so mm -hmm. I was figuring they'd be like 200 gold. Yes. Um, and I'll need to know what that does for me. Okay. Uh, at some point, I mean, it doesn't need to be. It's very simple. Uh, superior uh, instruments give you advantage. Okay. So this gives you advantage on cooking rolls. 
Okay. Oh, I'll write that down later. Um, uh, he'd be stopping by uh, Valentia's, uh, Valentia Ottenbar's, uh, for a bit so that Ella can uh, maybe stay the night with her and they can talk about things and whatnot. We'll maybe stay for supper or something. Yeah, pretty much as soon as you've uh, arrived in Farhaven, Valencia's not long from actually greeting you there, although really moving right beyond you to talk to mm -hmm. Ella. Uh, and uh, despite Ella's own protestations, uh, Valencia insists that she'll be spending the night with her. Yep. So it kind of takes you takes her away right away. And I, I will look at Ella and say, if you want to be a guard somewhere, you're going to have to learn to take orders sometimes and do things you may not like. Mm -hmm. She gives you a look that would melt glass and then uh, is taken away by Valencia. Um, and, uh, yeah, next we'd, uh, we'd probably end up st staying, uh, going into the mine and uh, staying in there uh, with uh, Thalestra. Okay. Um, you actually stay with Idea and with uh, Theodred. You do not see Thylestra. She does not make an appearance. Yeah. I will ask about her. And Idea says she's been showing up less and less these days. Mm. And that's both of us staying in the temple, right? Presumably, yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, if you wanted to look at the yeah. circle that was there. then It's a very uncomfortable place because that while they fixed it up, it's still not very fancy. Uh -huh. yeah. They don't seem to have guests that often. Um... Uh, so yeah, basically I'll chat with them, see how uh, how they're doing. Um, both of you are there, so both of you make inside checks. Fifteen. Twenty-five. Okay. Yep. Um, the talk is kind of boring and on the level, and you kind of fade out halfway thinking more about the temple itself and, and how you can uh, work around the temple and all that. Um, for you, you notice a bit of strain uh, from uh, Adea in particular, although Theodred is also showing a little bit of it. Uh, and you also notice that for most of the first day you're there, you don't see uh, the uh, the young girl. Um, I've forgotten her name. Okay. Uh, I thought that was Adea. No, no Adea is Rhea. Uh, okay. Rhea. Rhea. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then after a while, once uh, once you've gone off, I think you were going to go examine yeah. the circle. Uh, the circle. Right. Yeah, the circle that I had physically fixed. Yeah, but basically, it's another circle that's, that has a fountain in the center, um, in a space that had been cleared. It was it what it would have been a parapet when the building was above ground, but now when it's a below ground, it's just solid rock on all sides. But when uh, Zakis goes to leave for that, um, Theodred approaches you and says that. Um, Rhea has also been somewhat distant as of late, but I think mm. she's more. She's leaving Farhaven, I think, which is good. But she's. What did you get? She was like 10 years old, wasn't mm -hmm. she? Okay. She was very, very young. But she can turn into a cat tornado. Mm. Um, well, I will keep an eye out for her. Um, I'm sure she is fine, but. Um, it's still strange. Yes. Um, uh, one of the things I will talk with her is see how business is going. Business is going pretty well, actually. Since they reopened the mine, they 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 have slowly increased the amount of crystal that they're mm. they're extracting, uh, and also have found a few veins of ore. So they the the mine has grown actually larger because the the uh, larger crystal beings are able to actually manipulate it far better than most miners yeah. can. Um, plus they work fairly tire tirelessly and he's actually a bit it distracts him enough from kind of his funk about his daughter um, because uh, when Thylestra is here and gives them orders, there have been cases where they've simply gone into the wall and pulled the vein out directly. Mm. So they have not had to mine in some directions. They've yeah. simply gone and found the veins. So they're actually doing okay. Um, they have saved up some money um, and have been distributing a little bit, actually, to others in the town. Yeah. Uh, and also been supplying That's Morden good. with a, uh, with a, Thomas Morden with a consistent uh, collection of crystals. Good. That Excellent. they find interesting. Um, I should be, uh, I'm going to see if I can meet with him tomorrow. Uh, 
He's doing better. He seems better every day, in fact. Good. Um, I would like to purchase a couple hundred pounds of crystal of various colors and types. I'm sure we can do that. And I'll give them a hundred gold okay. for it. That's, I figure, should be good for that. Uh, he actually gives you half price. So you get twice as much material for that, that cost. Oh, good. Um, I tell him at some point I would like to get a couple of much larger pieces, but I don't have a place for them yet. Uh, I'm going to try to make a statue. Um, he tells you that the crystal beings actually use a lot of the large pieces to repair themselves and mm, to subsist upon. Um, but he can insist a few pieces be held aside. Oh uh, yeah, um, I mean they've it, also been this... been doing uh, business with um, uh, Isenor. Mm. Um, oh, th this will probably be several weeks at least. Um, but uh, we're starting a temple down in Vitor. Hopefully. No. But uh, yeah, other than that, I was trying to to help them out uh, a little bit. Uh, probably go check out the circle, see what Zacchaeus is doing. Okay, so Zacchaeus uh, is studying the circle? Yep. Okay. How badly mangled is it and what's going to have to be It's going to have to be repaired. So it's kind of like the one in the library I had to? Very much okay. like the one in the library. And you know that you cannot repair it, or at least you don't have the skill yet. Nala was the one that repaired the one in the library. So she would be ideally the best person to fix this yeah. one. Although her leaving the library is unlikely. Her leaving the library and coming to Farhaven and coming into the mine. There's a lot of ifs there. Yep. But ultimately she would be the best to fix that. Okay. Um, How powerful would I have to be before I can fix it? You'd have to specifically study it. Okay. Uh, study the, the art. You could apprentice with Nala if you wanted to. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Maybe one of the downtime things. Get you the knowledge to fix it. Okay. Um, and then... The next morning, um, we'll head over to Morden's place. Okay. Uh, we do early. find him in good spirits. Um, his kids are hanging out with him in the, the shop now, uh, whereas mostly they were in the background, uh, and they seem to be enjoying it. He's he's taking a joy in what he do, does, which is very different from the yeah, obsession good. he had before. Um, you notice that the front window does not have as many products in it because he's actually taking more time to mm. live, you might say. Um, but his youngest son seems to have a, a hankering to do some of the same work. At least he likes the hammer and he likes to hit things. Mm. And uh, every once in a while he's hitting the thing in the right direction. Like, hey kid, you're a natural diamond dust maker. <laughs> <laughs> he's not quite that strong yet, but... Okay. Um, and... Uh, Let's wrap this up fairly quickly. Yep. Uh, the only thing was there uh, was, um, again, kind of seeing how well they're doing. Uh, uh, if they had needed uh, help, he was going to give them some more money, but if they're doing fine... He's doing fairly well. He did very well at the end of last season. Um, and he's now... It's slowed down for sales, okay. just like everything else here in Far Haven. Um, then he won't give him money because uh, he's... I mean, he's built up his sort of proudness of who he was again I don't want to take it down by saying here's a, a gift um, you uh, do get the sense that that's already kind of being done because Theodred had been distributing some of the wealth of the mine and mm -hmm. Morden was one of the families that he was giving it to yeah um, I will uh, and I'll you have a uh, Morden thing I nice see you again I heard you had an upgrade for me Oh, yes, well, I do. You've got the upgrade, he just needs to install it. <laughs> uh, and it only takes him a few hours, actually, to make sure it's done. It seems like very precise work. At that point, he does shoo the kids away, and you see his, his wife kind of bring them back in. But you she also see her bit. smiling as well. She seems to be happier. Uh, and yeah, it takes him a couple of hours to set the gem. Uh, there's a small flash of light when the gem finally gets into its socket. There, that should do you for it. This is perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, is the other one Your work is amazing. The other one, um, Alzara? Yes, yes. No, but... Well, I have an upgrade ready for her as well. She does have the item, correct? Yeah, she has her item, yeah. Yeah, but she doesn't have... It has yeah. to be delivered to him so he can upgrade it. Okay. 
Well, we'll, uh, we'll let her know. With you. We'll get in touch with her as soon as uh, possible. Do you know where she is? Uh, you're probably in Vator last we saw. Yeah. yeah. Sending. Well, that might be lucky. I have a thought about heading down that way. I was going to ask if you wanted to go down. I, um, I've talked it over with my wife, and uh, she thinks it would be good for me to head out on the road for a little while, so I'm going to try. Okay, well, we have space in the carriage. Mm-hmm. Oh, today, yes. Although, uh, I mean, if that's too soon, that's, that's no, fine. No, no, I, I just today. need to pack up some product, and I'll... Um, and you see a little bit of the uncertainty reach, uh, creep back into his, his uh, form, or into, his, into his habit, but he seems to steal himself. I'll be ready to leave in the morning. Okay. Um, oh, yes, and uh, I did deliver the message to Gerbro, so... Uh, yep. Gerbro will be super surprised when he shows up. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, pick up Ella... Uh, and uh, head back down. Okay. Ella seems a little sulky on the way back, as if that wasn't really what she wanted to be in doing, but... Uh, well, she can sit up front with me. We can chat about uh, about things. Okay. All right. Is that your downtime? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Five thirty. Yeah. Five thirty. Why don't we take oh, a break? Brief, yeah, brief break. Blah, we'll come blah, back. Blah, 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 blah. Eventually, <laughs> I'll get all the words in the right order, and then we'll start with the the, still. the rest of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> And we continue. And for you watching the video, that was 15 seconds long. For, for us, it was an infinity. Uh, we are back. We'll wind up the last little bit as uh, Zakis and Namrun make their way back to Vatur, having had an interesting little time in Farhaven. You arrive safely back in Vatur and begin to resettle yourselves. Okay. Um, there's one last thing that I would like to do. It better be quick. Mm hmm. Um, but he goes to the his. Uh, followers mm-hmm. and mentions that uh, uh, I realize that I haven't been the best teacher so far. Uh, I'm new at this. Um, Ella's kind of standing beside you almost in an honor guard position. Sure you don't want to join my church? Um, uh, I talked with... Uh, I'm. We may be able to... I may be able to set up a meeting with one of the clerics, uh, one of the, the people who runs the Temple of Namazini here, uh, yeah, who odd, may be able to... Odd looks around the room as they're kind of confused as to what this means. Uh, as m- many of you know, I was not trained as a cleric. I kind of fell into it. For that reason, I am not exactly certain how I should be teaching you. Um, it is my hope that uh, this uh, cleric of Namazani, who I've met before, uh, she is a, an excellent and knowledgeable person, may be able to teach us something about how to reach out to Paluxia, uh, what it means to be a cleric, uh, so that you may be able to better decide if you wish to remain with me or go on and do other things. Um, uh, as well, uh, and I pick these up after we get back, uh, I get the uh, the six sets of robes that I had uh, made. Okay. Um, as I, those who have officially joined, I would like to present you with with these vestments. Um, and uh, I, I go to um, uh, where is she? Uh, I go to uh, Irena, and I present her. Uh, these would be uh, they would, these will all just be sort of robes, but they're fine quality robes. Okay. Um, and hers are in the color of light blue with dark blue highlights. Uh, and 
above the heart it has uh, a silvery upright handprint with the the like the wave uh, curving wave symbol of uh, the new church on the palm. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's yes. <a> cat. <laughs> I think it was disapproval by the cat. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. yes. The cat is a thing. Um, I say, uh, you are the uh, first member of the Diamond Order. Uh, if you wish to stay with us, I know you are interested in healing those. And that is the branch that uh, uh, I intend to uh, do that. Okay. She steps up and kind of looks over at her brother, who kind of nods a little bit, accepts the robes, and um, sits back down, kind of looking at them. Uh, then I will go to uh, uh, Duncan and Taylor. Uh, and uh, is that you are the first members of the Sapphire Guard, those who will guard those in need and uh, protect those, uh, protect the temple. Uh, that's uh, those robes are dark blue with white highlights. Um, and uh, on the the chest, there's uh, one of those like sort of tri curved triangular shield sort okay. of shapes, uh, with the symbol of the church in the middle of it. Uh, and then, lastly, I go to Breda, uh, and uh, uh, Atnal and Galen, uh, and I present them with robes. Uh, they're in the primarily dark. Uh, sorry. Uh, primary, they're, they're, they match actually uh, what Amarin is wearing. They're primarily a medium blue but with greenish highlights. Um, and the symbol on it is uh, a water lily with the symbol of the church in the middle. Um, I say, you are the, me the first members of the Emerald Accord. Uh, those who will deal with others. Uh, promote peace, communication, and knowledge. Um, with these gifts, I hope to do better by you in the. Uh, along with these gifts, I hope to do better by you in the future. Uh, there, of course, will be times that I have to leave. Uh, there are things that need to be done to keep evil in check, uh, but. I hope soon to have a place that we can call our own and continue our studies. Um, I will try to bring in those who can fill in the deficiencies in my own knowledge. And hopefully, Paluxia willing, I may be able to bring Damon here to stay once we have a place. I think he would appreciate talking with people. Um, and then basically I'll I'll have our, our feast for them uh, well, not magical they seem to be impressed by having some direction and uh, the new robes uh, and kind of as you finish that speaking beside you you hear Ella uh, kind of raise her, her fist in the air for Poluxia and the others respond in kind very quickly it's a little bit disturbing because it's not probably the, the tone you were looking for but that's what no, Ella would contribute fine. Um, you see, looking in through the window, because you can't come into the Elegant Pony, but there's there's a window at the back where Iroh can actually be watching well, the proceedings. I would do this out front, okay. so that Iroh can take... Probably most of the stuff would be done out front, so that Iroh can participate more okay. easily. And there's a there's a nod of, of respect from her as well. Um, and... Nope, that was your one thing. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, there, there's... I was trying to think, because I still have that plus one Spear of Paluxia that's going to go to one of the guards, but I don't know which one it should go to yet, so that'll wait. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's all he wanted to do. Uh, then if if Emerald's calling or something, then uh, I'm all ready for that. Okay. A week has passed, and you've all found different things to occupy your time. 
but in particular for Elzera, there has been something that's been gnawing away at you. Um, Ferendra has been spending a lot of time with you, um, scouting out the new location, enjoying the fact of becoming a couple of different animals, one of which you did not know before. And she does this within the, essentially the broken down sanctum that is the, the, the former grove and now an overgrown estate. Uh, she shows you a very large form. Uh, it's gray and has two large horns in its head. And she demonstrates its power by pretty much crushing a wooden wall that was there. Uh, I was on one of the other islands and I saw this beast. They call it a rhinoceros. Do, do you not like it? That looks fun. <laughs> it, it is. The training is going well. I... The griffin is not yet used to other people. I don't know if it's scent or, or what, but it still seems to be a little standoffish. But I think, to be honest, can I tell you something? Yeah, of course. It's about, it's about Madame Ferendrel's brother. Yes. You know that he was missing for a long time, and Alexia was looking for him. She finally... Well, she says that she found him. I, I didn't... I, I don't know Alil very well. I, I'd never really seen him. I entered Madame Ferendril's service just uh, only a, a short while ago. And her brother had always been in a quain, or had been for many years. So I don't really know him, but there's something about him that I don't like, that I don't trust. And I think that the Griffin has picked up on that too. And I think that's why it's nervous. I know I met Alil while we were in Aquain for a very short moment. And he was scared of something he was asked to do for his life. What? He was asked to set up a meeting between a dangerous group of people and someone else. And he expressed that this could go badly. And that's when he went missing. And he went missing within a week. So what do you think happened? Who were these people? I have a hunch that the person who is here might not be Elio. Oh. Who, who do you think he is? I have no clue. Alexia seems blind to this. I... I've, I would be too if it was Ezzy. I've tried to talk to her a few times about it, but she doesn't want to talk about it. She says all of that is in the past, and that he's back now, and that's all that should matter. But I'm worried about her. Would you know if it was him? I only met him the once, and it was only for no more than ten minutes. Did anybody else talk to him for longer? Um, I, I would know this. Everybody was basically there the same amount Pretty of time. Pretty much, yeah. 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 Yeah, we, I mean, we kind of talked with him for a couple of hours, I think, because we I had talked with him about business dealings and, and such, uh, but, yeah, it was much longer than that. Yeah, you do remember that that uh, the request specifically for the meeting, I believe, came from Zakas. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Amrun had that, dealt yeah. with him for some information, Yeah. and you do know that Clark knew the, the underworld and probably had dealt with him. I think he actually had dealt with him before in the past. 
briefly. I might know somebody who might be able to tell more than me, but most of us only met him for a short while. Maybe, maybe we can set up a meeting or, or I don't know. I don't know what he was like before, but he seems dark somehow. A little scary. When he's around, it's almost as though I'm hearing voices. No words, just like a murmur in the back of my head. And, and I look over and I, I can see him looking at me. But he's not saying anything. Please, if you could talk to him or... Do it discreetly, though, because I don't want to bother Madame Ferendrill if it's nothing. And if it is something, I want it to be carefully taken care of. Of course. I can... How about this? Mm -hmm. Madame Ferendrill has been interested in the Griffin for a while, and I think it would be calm enough that she could ride it if I was there. I can have her ride the griffin, and I can make sure she's away, and then Elil should be there in the house by himself. I, I think all of you are familiar with the house. I think that there would be no question of you coming in. I am for sure. The, the guards know me, and I'm sure they know Zacchaeus as well. If you could arrange that, then let me know, and I'll, I'll make it happen. And that way, anything that happens would be safe and away from Alexia, uh, Madame Ferendrill. And you notice the slip there. She's usually pretty formal when talking about Alexia Ferendrill. Um, and, and, and I would think it would be safer uh, for all of us. Definitely. Um, I will talk to the rest of my group because this is something that I think they should be in on. If you could keep the information that I've told you discreet for now. Of course. Uh, as well. Um, I will talk to them and see what we can come up with and then get back to you. There's a, there's a sort of relief in her shoulders that appears and she hugs you. Thank you so much. I've been worried about this, but I, I'm kind of caught in the middle. Of course. It will come much better from someone who's not directly there, I think. Hopefully. Thank you. Honestly, she seems to like Zacchaeus, so if anyone should tell, uh, should tell her, it's probably him. But only once you know something. Exactly. Okay. So, I will contact you soon. Good. And you spend the rest of that day kind of tooling around, but she does have to go. Um, tending to the griffin uh, is... Not quite a full-time job, but she does note that if she doesn't feed it on a regular basis, there have been some pets going missing lately, and she's trying to prevent that from happening. I'm sure Rascal and Brenda are safe somewhere. <laughs> oh, they're fine. Uh, it doesn't seem to bother. If anything, uh, Frendra notes that they've kind of bonded as this weird family, uh, although they do have to keep taking Rascal out of the house. I'm sorry. I've tried. And Brenda is kind of building a little cave for herself. She's mounded up dirt against the uh, against the stables, basically. Thank you for taking care of them. Oh, they're a delight. Uh, well, delight might not be the right word, but for Rascal in particular. But it's okay. It's nice being around more animals. I know. I couldn't just leave them there in the winter with everything going on. And... I kind of formed a detachment. <laughs> I can understand. So. And you go on your merry way? Go on my merry way. Okay. Yep. Are you going to contact anybody or? Um, yeah, I will contact Clark actually. Ah. At first. Clark can be found at most bars, most times of the day. <laughs> yep. Um, 
Kind of yeah. like Bozo, he's probably got a routine now where he's just sort of appears in certain places on a semi regular schedule. Yeah. Yeah. You um, gotta be able to be found, but also you don't wanna be found. Yeah. Um so I go hunt you down. Not hard. Uh and I sit sat your tail on can I have a moment? Sure. I think that we might have something to look into. Ooh. Um, Good, I was getting bored. Yeah. So, remember Elil, the guy at the docks that, like, was going to make an, uh, try to set up a meeting and then went missing? Vaguely. Well, he's the brother of one of the council members here. Okay. And he went missing, but was now found. And a certain hippogriff that I know gets very angsty around him. So you think he's a one of those things? That's my suspicion. Okay. Because when both Zakus and Emrin tried to contact him, there was no answer. Alright. So let's find him and question him. There was I talked with Ferendra, my my friend who works for the councilwoman. Okay. Uh, and she suggested that we go and question him while the lady is out of the house. Okay. Um, on a ride on the hippogriff. Because that is something that she's been looking forward to. So that she is not involved. Well, the kind of questions that I generally ask take a while, so you may need some Definitely. magical help. Definitely. Um, she would be able to take her fairly far. Okay. Um, but these creatures are very fast. Let's uh, gather up our friends and pay this person a visit. Definitely. I figured I would talk to you first because you might have met him more than anyone else and might have a better chance hmm. of telling if he is who he said he is. I'll have to see him in person to be sure. Definitely. Okay. And if worse comes to worse, I know that I have a spell that might kill him <laughs> if he's not, but would get us the answer. <laughs> All right, then. And that's why it's a last resource. <laughs> okay. Uh, I would imagine our bookish friend is where all the books are. Yep. And I have no idea where a religious friend is. Who knows? He's, he's been staying at the... <laughs> the uh, Elegant pony for the past. Oh, like, well, I've seen him. I've so. seen him a few times this week. Yeah, I know where he is. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, he's been you, doing uh, small gatherings out front. Yeah, the elegant pony is turning into less and less of a regular pub, so much as a pretty much a hub for his uh, his cult. That's fine. So. All right. <laughs> I found another place to stay. Bit nicer than the elegant pony. Uh, I'll go gather Zacchus. And why don't we meet at the pony and we can start from there. That works for me. Okay. So Clark will go off and get Zacchus from the book, the house book, book houses, <laughs> house of books. So you inquire at the front gates. Yeah. And Looking someone. Looking for Zacchus, it's Clark. One of the guards goes and fetches you. Because the new procedure is they don't let people in yeah. for much. All right, I'm on my way. Get off my bed, bring Prina with me, bang my head on the door sill. <laughs> <laughs> you got to learn to duck. I know. This taller form I'm not used to. I've been doing it's all been that tall to the lamp out there what? continuously. <laughs> yeah. You're all tall to me. Mm. I'm even taller. It's it's actually quite awkward. Anyway. Yeah. It's like you're 14 again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. And she flies up and sits on your head. I'll warn you if you're going to hit anything. Excellent. Just nah. please give you me a You kind of feel her legs dangling over your fore yeah. forehead, kind of kicking every once in a while. <laughs> Be careful. Just watch out, though. She would like smack her into the top of a doorway, she make a pop. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> what I was thinking. <laughs> so I'll make my way down to meet Clark. Okay. Uh, on the way, you learn how this system is going to work, where she basically yells out, Doc! <laughs> when she thinks you're going to hit your head on something. It's impossible to miss. Uh, and you kind of get this sense that she kind of realizes the perilous situ situation she's in, but she's, she's dedicated to do it. Yeah. Although you do feel your hair uh, pulled a little bit as she grabs on for for uh, for dear life, as you might say. You make your way out. Um, they have started kind of clearing some of the ground in the courtyard now where they're going to build the tower. 
and actually they're digging a bit of a, of a hole where they're going to put rock down uh, to uh, a certain distance as well to make it more more grounded. Okay. Um, it's been explained that they're building a watchtower. That's the word that's going around. But they have not explained anything about the Alembic to the average person here. Good. Uh, that's still staying is, as far as you know, with five people. Yourself, Imro, Gerbo, uh, Nala, and Adrian. You go to the front gates to find your half-orc friend standing there waiting. Larry, long time no chat. Well, one week no chat, but still. Yeah. Uh, we, we have a new job. We need your magic. Hmm. Uh, what does this involve? Or should we have a walk and then I can ask what this should involve? If, if you have your things ready, I can go now. Yeah, let's just assume I have my things ready. I mean, fair enough. It's or I'll run you, back upstairs you, and it's going to be off screen, run back downstairs. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, do you grab your spell book and bring it with you? or yes. do you? Because you already <laughs> have learned your spells for today, unless you want to learn use rituals out of it. No, the, uh, the spell book always comes with me. Okay. It's fireproof. Yeah, you got your little backpack. Or you, you know, you have a bag of holding. Don't I don't think no, so. No, it's oh. me and Emeryn that do. Okay. So you have a small backpack yeah. that you kind of gather together. The other few books that I keep with me are in there too, yeah. Except okay, so it's a large backpack. What's your strength? Ten. Hmm. Not, so, not so big a, lot, a, a bag. <laughs> uh, you start to walk along. Mm -hmm. So what does this job involve? Uh, might be another uh, shape changer. Imposter thing. Let me guess. Upper echelons of the city. Eh, middle to high. Okay. Who's being impersonated this time? I don't have all the details. So okay. I just know that we'll probably need magic to either make it tell the truth or set it down or maybe catch it on fire. I don't know. Okay. If worse comes to worse. Well, I can creep into its mind. It's illegal, but if... Not here. It's not illegal knows. if it's not a person. Exactly. We're, we're not in Barhaven. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, they weren't like very fond of that anyway. <laughs> we're I going mean, to the are. pony, and we'll uh, get Amrun, and we'll uh, go from there. Excellent. So, uh, who is this person? If I may ask. Uh, uh, somebody. Uh, that that tells me exactly who it is. Thank <laughs> you so much. I don't know. It might not even be that person. It might just be some sort of doppelganger in disguise. I mean, who's being impersonated? Uh, some friend of the council. Friend. Rel relative or something. Alexia? I don't know. Why don't we find it? Alright. So we'll head to the pony and pick up Amory. Okay. Um, the feast is and, finished. And Ozera, really. <laughs> the feast is finished by now, and you're kind of sitting back. You can see that, and a few of them have tried on their robes, and they, 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 they fit fairly well. Um, they were made kind of uh, general sizes, so there's a little adjusting yeah. to go on. But yeah, I would have done describing the sizes, but mm -hmm. yeah, Emmerin's not a tailor. Yep. Um, and actually, surprisingly enough, one of them, uh, uh, Breda, uh, starts directing them on how to wear them properly. Um, and you find uh, the remains of a feast. Hmm. Clark will pick up a pack of something. Okay. My people are now Chew wearing robes. <laughs> Yeah, you can see they all kind of have similar stylings to Amrun's. We're looking for the boss. <laughs> uh, yeah, it f takes you a moment, but you see uh, Amrun standing amongst them. Mm -hmm. His robe probably is slightly bulkier than the rest with the armor you wear underneath yeah. it. Uh, duty calls. <coughs> Spicy meat. Mm. Uh, what is duty saying? Uh... Duty is saying private room. Yeah, about that. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I say, uh, um, basically, do as you will for now. I'll let you know when the first class is. Do as you will, Shabu. Mm -hmm. The extent of the law. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I must uh, go for a short while. I'll be back later. Uh, Alice says, I will keep them in shape. And she gets a stern looking on her face. Just remember, you're not a member of the church yet. I will watch over them. This is Good girl. Was. I pat her on the shoulder. She kind of flinches. You find a uh, private room? Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Emron has a room here. The, I, so. You have most of the rooms, actually. <laughs> exactly. Plan there, so. 
Uh, yeah, you find yourselves in the private space. Clark will spend a couple of gold to have some booze brought in. A few people will look a little bit strangely at this thing sitting on Zakus's head. <laughs> but going, Whee! and trying to steer his ears. <laughs> um, what is Thorn up to these days? What is Thorn up to at the moment? Um, Thorn is probably, I imagine, curled up on the rooftop. Okay. Keeping an eye out. Uh, I would have let him know that uh, just before I summoned him, I did summon a big blue one. It might still be in the city. Um, so there might be another of his kind here, or they might have moved out on elsewhere. Or okay. might have frozen um, to death in the winter. Nah. Um, other than that, basically, yeah, like, I'll just say, he's got the run of the place like a cat would, but just, I do let him know to try to not be too much of an inconvenience to people because he's smart, not like a cat. Okay. He probably made off with one of the legs of uh, lamb that was at the feast. Yeah. Well on the roof, kind of just gnawing away mm-hmm. at it, even though it doesn't really need to eat, but the sensation is tasty. So Clark has the floor, I would think. Here we are. Uh, Clark brings in, or orders or brings in some booze, sits it on the table, and says, uh, Duty calls, everyone. Zara will fill you in. Um, you know how Aaliyah kind of went missing yep. after we met him? Presumed dead, yes. Well, he's back. Really? And freaking out a hippogriff. Anytime it comes near. You had yeah, seen him briefly when Alex- Alexia came back into the city. Yeah. Um, I she, he was he was riding in the coach, there. I believe, so nobody really got a good look at him. Yeah. I, I know I saw like a shadow in a doorway. Pretty much. I think I'm going to need a little more clarification. Is he here in the city or just back in the land of the living? He's here in, in the Alexia city. Estate. Okay. I and the griffin Alexia, is your right? griffin friend? Yes. Okay. Sorry? Because I did meet with Alexia. Mm-hmm. And not only was why well, I didn't see him. He was in a room separately. She was hesitant to discuss him. She just didn't seem to be herself either. I mean, you remember what she looked like before at Marius's blessing? Strong, proud. Mm-hmm. When I met with her recently, she was crying on my knee and trying to seduce me. This, this, it's a bit of a one eighty, you know. <laughs> So not only I don't know. <laughs> she kind of had the hots for your back when we. Uh, she was interested you, in my visions of Maurice's blessing. Uh, uh, <laughs> possibly. Where do you keep those visions? In my mind. Um. <laughs> everyone's gonna leave it at that. Um, no. um. Okay, so he's in town. He's staying at the estate at the moment. Mm-hmm. Any time Ferendra goes near him, she feels off. Any time mm-hmm. the hippogriff is anywhere near near him, he gets rowdy and spooked. Mm. If I could learn more details from Ferendra, I might be identi- no. able to identify what you magic could, may be at work. You could try reading his brain, too. Yes. We Which aren't involving things. Ferendra. Okay. She's already offered to take Alexia on a ride on the Hippogriff. Ah, she's our distraction. She is the distraction. While they're out, we would go in and find out if Aaliyah is who he says he is. And I'll just wink to Clark. It's like, we've done this before. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bet you five gold the place burns down shortly before we manage to get out of there. <laughs> I'll, 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 be bet, so pessimistic. I'll bet you five that it burns down after we get out. I thought you were a bringer of hope, I'm ruined. <laughs> <laughs> I he hope I'm no not going to burn to death. Um, I'll tell you what, if neither of us win, we can donate the money to charity. Sure. All right. In about two weeks, I'll be a licensed charity. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, well, so, sure. So are we sneaking in there? So we, we need a plan. I mean, so we're obviously keeping it from Alexia. Well, yes. We're keeping it from Alexia. I, I told Ferendra that I would contact her if we agreed to do this. Um, she said sure. she would take her out. And the guards are familiar with me. I go in often enough. And they must be familiar enough with Zacchaeus. Yes. Booty calls. <laughs> <laughs> Zacchaeus is like... 
raise yes. my eyebrow like what? <laughs> We've gotten much booty, but what do you call it? Um, um, so uh, being ten inches taller, how did the wild magic affect booty calls? You know? <laughs> ten percent more. They take, they take ten inches longer to call. I don't know. Um, <laughs> It's only ten inches um, taller, by the way. That's yeah. the only so direction. So we can get in, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, it would be getting to him that would be the issue, and making sure he doesn't a get away, b figure out how to find out that yeah they are them without me putting a moonbeam on him. I can read his thoughts if somebody else asks questions. Mm. I remember what Rumi was in. I do as well. I mean, the first thing that pops into my mind is Susuro. He's brought people back from the dead. Uh, Fresh dead. And for a while, Alexia was missing yeah. too. He might have been there. We don't know what was where Susuro was after he disappeared. The city has a history of doppelgangers too. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's my thought. Well, hopefully it's just doppelganger. So. Um, yeah, well, I wish I'd known this last night before I memorized my spells. <laughs> I mean, we could um, do this tomorrow. We weren't given a t There was nope. no timeline discussed. No, it I was said you were to tell her this. when she needed to do it, and she would tell okay. you when it's off. Uh, if yeah. we've got a day to prepare for it, then, yeah. then that might be a good idea. Mm. Yeah, so, because um. she, she said for me to talk to you guys, and I would tell mm. her when... And she would tell me when it, when the post is clear. If you could ask her for an exact description of how she feels and how the hippogriff behaves, anything she can possibly tell us about the effects. I, I tell <laughs> everything that I know. Mm -hmm. okay. and but I mean, like if she can write us a document or something. <laughs> Duly notarized. <laughs> if you want to write it down, go ahead. I had this discussion not two hours ago. Okay. My memory's not that bad. <laughs> um, okay, uh, yeah, I mean, I can... I can try to... Or I can uh, memorize some truth-oriented spells, so... Uh, and I can try to memorize some uh, restraint spells. Mm. Okay, well... Um, I could also try to scry on him, although... Yeah, I can try I, that as well. I can creep on him. From outside the estate. Oh, a canine is a range of 100 feet, doesn't it? No, then I can move it wherever I want. Yeah. Okay, I thought it still had a maximum range. Because um, I believe he followed, like, yeah. all around yeah. the plane. Um, a silver link person, yeah. Well, he did for a bit, but he did have to drop it at one point. Yeah, because it expires after an hour. Yeah, it okay. expires. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I mean, we might want to do that. A little reconnaissance. And if he can detect the arcane eye, then we've got problems. <laughs> that is exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Of course, and then the, the, the then, okay. yeah. The downside is, if he does notice it, then he's going to be on alert and possibly gone. Or yeah. you guys can surround the mansion. I'll, but not do anything yet. I'll creep on him with an arcane eye. If he notices, then I'll let you know to just like go. Uh, is Clark familiar with the terrain of that particular manor and its surrounds? I can describe it for him. Uh, yeah, I mean, you haven't been inside the 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 manor with. Right. Zach's descriptions, though you can get them, and, and, and actually, yeah, as well, okay. um, you can get a decent layout of it. Um, okay. It's a a large manor. I think it was three floors, uh, made of wooden wooden stone and brick. Um, it had. Uh, He's mostly just concerned with like uh, roots of egress, uh -huh. and if he can go roof to roof to take chase. It's right. separated from right. uh, buildings nearby. It has a bit of land around it, and okay. has a wall around it as well, uh, guarded at the front. So there's one exit through the wall, though. Uh, there's yeah one one large gateway where they bring uh, wagons in and out as well. Okay. I, having flown over the manor, would be able to give you that information. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yeah. There are more than one door in the manor itself. Right. Yeah. Uh, the grand uh, foyer at the front, but there is a, a door at the back, presumably also used by servants. There's the cooking and uh, and cleaning is toward the back of the building. There is okay. an, uh, an attached, uh, really kind of an attached garage, but it's also stables where they keep their horses. The griffin itself is, has a nest on the roof of that garage. Okay. Um... If you don't need me, I'll go have a look at the house tonight, and I'll meet up with you guys in the morning. Sounds good. Sure. Um. Stay safe. Don't die this time. <laughs> I'll, I'll be fine. Yeah, at some point we really need to <laughs> sure? figure out yeah, who's fine. carrying what for the roof resources, because you guys might want to have some of them. Um, I'm currently just carrying what I had bought. Yeah. I think we've got a bunch of other potions as well that yeah. people might want to have at some point. Um, I don't know if if scrying or the eye is going to necessarily help us. I mean, if he's just walking around the house, none of us know him that well. Really, what we need to do is talk with him in person. Yes, but if he's staying in his room, mm. we'll know exactly. I suppose there might be something strange that we see there. Um, Hmm. Because I believe scrying you can scry on a place as well. Or is it an uh, it's uh, a place or a person that you're familiar with, I believe. Uh, well, no, it's a place or a person. You can try it if you've ju even right. just heard of the target. Being more familiar but gives you a better chance of doing it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so. well, it's casting time 10 minutes. I mean, uh, I could try one right now, just just to take a quick look, see if he's just like sitting on the bed, motionless or something. Yeah, I'd like to be in the neighborhood if you do that. Yeah, just, so just in case he bolt, we can follow him. I agree with that. Sure. I mean, we can wait till tomorrow then, because uh, if we are if we are going in, I'd like to have some of my other spells prepared. Yeah. Um, are we gonna need manacles for this? I mean... Uh, we have the orb. Mm -hmm. The uh, oh, Benzabalaro. Yeah. Yeah. We want to keep them handy, though. Yeah. Um, we have those. Um, Actually, I mean, that might be something that he would be better at yeah. using. Being I'll that you're more of a physical you, throw you can throw better person. than I can. Okay. Yeah. You just throw them at the target. Do you actually have the card for the Iron Benzabalaro? Somewhere here. I think the target makes a deck save. Yeah. Also, they can be broken if they're strong enough. But, uh, they're also utterly engulfed in them. Mm -hmm. Isn't there like a flap for the mouth? No, really. There was a little bit you could see in the in the previous one because the, the the dryad had managed to kind of slip partially out of them, and then you dispelled them, I believe. Right. Yeah. I mean, all only is for that to catch him anyways, and then... Exactly. Tie him up and release it. Um, I can also prepare some more grabby spells. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I definitely will have moonbeams, because we know that that is very effective on doppelgangers. Clark will pocket the thing. Okay. Ten out of ten. <laughs> Wood moon again. Yeah, I'll create food now. Okay, so what's the plan? Um I think we are going to basically discuss what what spells we're going to prepare for the event. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, maybe scry like minutes before. We all get in position. We all get into position. Then yeah. Scry. Or so you, you're or scry. waiting a day. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're waiting morning. overnight. Okay. So that we can actually prepare for it. I'll see you want to. Range the the Griffin flight. Um. Yeah, I would uh, tell her to try to do it tomorrow. 
Okay. Are you using sending, or how are you going to communicate with her? Um, I will send. I will send an animal messenger. Okay. With a message in druidic, wrap, uh, wrapped around its claws, okay. kind of like I did with the uh, the jackfruit. No, not jackfruit. Um, the J Jeffrey spice things. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to do that with a little bundle of uh, druidic, and the, the message I that the animal is bringing is utter nonsense. Um, like. Uh, is it like literally nonsense, or is it? it it's nothing important. Okay. Just. Just hey, a trivial message. Yeah. Okay. Just trivial, nothing to. If anyone would overhear, would cause any alarm. Okay. Like. Um, make a deception roll. As you compose a message that people aren't going to think is a waste of a spell and yet interesting enough. Oh, that's actually a 17. Okay. So that is a total of 16. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you compose a message about, you know, the calendar changing and then there's expected to be a, a moon shift coming up. Nothing really important, but enough that, uh, you know, someone thinking, oh, Druid is speaking to Druid in something fancy. Yes. What's the Druidic message have? Uh, the Druidic message would have, we will do this um, tomorrow, if possible, in the afternoon, if possible. Please let me know. Okay. Uh, what kind of animal are you summoning the message with? Um, I would send it with probably a, either a bird or... Yeah, I would probably do a bird of some kind. Okay. A little barn swallow uh, takes your message and kind of wraps it up in its, its claws to carry this bundle of sticks with it, looking kind of like a bird with a bundle of sticks. It disappears. Yep. About 20 minutes later... Um, you find a large crow uh, kind of rapping on the window near next to you. Yep. Um, you let it in, and uh, it's got a bundle of feathers and leaves in its uh, hands, doing kind of the same sort of trick to you. Um, although, <laughs> the message that the crow actually speaks and delivers is a little less subtle. Um, it it sort of comes out as the moons are really important, especially today. But maybe tomorrow. And uh, there's a bit of hesitation in the message as if you're kind of thrown off by that. The uh, the bundle of feathers and leaves, however, uh, spells out that uh, Alexia will be in meetings until late afternoon tomorrow. Um, so she she'll be away for them, but I don't know when she's coming back. So I can't give you a specific time. Today she's free, tomorrow she has an agenda, and while she will be away for part of it, she could pop by, back at any time. So it's a little less certain time tomorrow, but it can be done. Uh, I would relay this information to everybody else. Okay. Um, and we will wait a moment. All right. Um, Cause yeah, I think having the proper spells would be important. Um, for me, I don't usually have restraining spells. Um, so that wouldn't be something that I would have. I would definitely have Moonbeam because that would be foolish of me not to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of my signature. Um, but I do have, just in what I have here, I would have Pass Without a Trace. Um, on me, and that's pretty much the only spell that might be useful. Okay. Well, you determine your spells, Clark. What are you going to be doing that evening to prepare? Uh, we're, we're we're talking about if we want to do it tomorrow mm -hmm. or if. Are we you want still to do still it. not sure if you want to do it tonight? W with this added information. Okay. okay. That that's what I I was meaning. Ah, okay. Uh, I get you. Like this is what I I would have. It would be useful to have it. But also having more control over her being out of the house. Uh, she might be able, to, if we wait till tomorrow, she has an agenda and might be able to pop in whenever. 
if we do it now, we have more control over when she gets back. Huh. Well. That is the current. Okay, so situation. if we do it tomorrow, we don't know when she's going to be back. Yeah. It, the, the, from the information you were given, she has an agenda that is known of to be probably until late afternoon, but the, the ending time is not certain, and it yeah. could end very, very suddenly. Yeah. Um, um, at best, there would be a window basically in late afternoon t uh, tomorrow, but supper time she'd want to be back. So yeah. there's a narrower window tomorrow, which is a, a little uncertain when it starts, and there's the more certain mer uh, one this evening. Yeah. Well. Um... Because Elzara doesn't, just going with what I usually have, wouldn't mm. have anything like Entangle or anything. Uh, Moonbeam she would have. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't have any of the, the stuff that's good against any of the entities that he might be. Uh, yeah. I'd rather wait till tomorrow and try to work fast. Yeah. Um. So. Um, so is that what we're doing? Yeah, yep. good. that's what I think we should, yeah. Uh, yep. You said my meeting was in two or three days. Is right. that two days or three days? Um, it was scheduled for two days. It could get pushed to the third. Okay. Okay. And given that Alexia is in meetings all tomorrow, but there's uncertainty about when they'll end, it's probably why your meeting was also mm -hmm. uncertain as the exact time. Sure. Um, yeah, I guess... Let's make sure we're in the area by mid-afternoon so that we can roll whenever, as soon as possible. Yep. Um. So I will, just for simplicity's sake, do this now while we're talking and we're, we're planning. Um, so I'm slotting Entangled, for sure. Uh, I have Moonbeam, which is going to stay there. Uh, is there anything else that you guys can think of that would be useful? Fairy fire. Cool. Just in case he turns invisible. Magic is crazy. Yeah. Mm. You're preparing your knowledge. Yeah, kind of. Mm. I've only got two of them now, so it's not yeah, so it's like, huh, do I stab with this one or this one? <gasps> They're both the same. <laughs> okay. um, if I can get a piece of chain and attach this knife onto this knife. Later on down the road, perhaps? Uh, but not as of yet. I see you playing knifey chukachaku before. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so uh, I, I would have fairy fire, um, entangled, pass without a trace, moonbeam. Um, animal messenger would be one that she would have. If anything else comes up, uh, let me know in the morning. I'll see you then. Clark, yeah. Clark will get up and leave. He's going to go do a loop around the neighborhood and see what's going on in okay. person. Sure. We'll go back to the okay. library too. See you then. All right. Um, yeah. uh, mind reading spells for you yeah. and Arcane Eye, mm. basically. Yeah, I'm adding it in uh, Protection versus Good and Evil, uh, Zone of Truth, Calm Emotions, Remove Curse, and Magic Circle. So what is Clark doing to scout out the area? He's yeah, just going to find a nearby building and uh, get up on the roof of it and have a look about and see sort of like how the streets lay out and where the best place to drive a cart would be and where you couldn't really fit one through and okay. sort of see wh which way the traffics would flow in and out of the, the state. Um, okay. Let's make a survival roll. Sure. Uh, with an untrained survival, that's an 11. 11? Yeah. Okay. Um, the streets are pretty easy to see. You find a, a decent building, uh, kind of a, 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 I don't want to say flop house, but it's a, a mm -hmm. small amounts of, of, uh, of apartments, basically, all together with a pub on the first floor. Right. It's a couple of buildings away, because there aren't any large buildings right next to the streets that surround her uh, estate. It's a bit, okay. it's a bit further away. It's kind of right on the edge of the uh, the expensive side of the city, okay. um, which isn't too far away from the cheaper side of the city, to be honest. 
looking around, you can see that uh, pretty much as was described before, the main gates uh, are, or the main wall with the main gates there is quite high. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be very difficult to scale that. It could be done, mm -hmm. uh, but it would be very difficult to scale that in a hurry. Uh, it's exposed on all four sides, however, so it would be very difficult to actually do that in, in secret. Mm -hmm. um, there are actually um, ever-lit torches on uh, lampposts on, on her side of the street. Right but not so much on the other side. Okay. Um, you watch it for a few hours. Um, you see her uh, at one point come out uh, in, uh, and talk to some people who have come into the gate. Um, make a perception check as you're, as you're there. Sure. Uh, 15. 15. Um, her brother doesn't seem to make an appearance outside, but okay. at one point you see the, a shadowy figure uh, approximately the same height as Elil was last time you saw him, which has okay. been some time ago, uh, okay. by one of the upper windows. Okay. Um, you get the weird sense that while you can't see much of him, he sees you. Okay. That weird kind of sense that, you, that people have of being spotted. All right, well, not sure what to do. Clark will give a wave and then move on. Okay. Um, otherwise, the building is, is, like I said, fairly far set from most of it. There's no real buildings right next to it. Um, but there is that back entrance, which you do see the servants coming in and out of. Mm -hmm. And it seems like they, they spend some time out there. Uh, that's their break spot as well. Okay. Um, is it... All right, is it uh, is it an option to see inside the wall from the top of this other flop house? Yeah, you can see the okay. inside. So you can sort of see the layout of the, of the, of yeah. the grounds? Yeah, okay. they're well-kept grounds. There are some small trees, uh, one large oak tree on the property. Carts and wagons? Uh, yes, you do see them come in actually to the, uh, what looks to be essentially a four-space uh, garage okay. for the uh, carts, and then okay. there's also the uh, stables attached to it. It's a fairly large place. Okay. A fairly large estate. And you can see the griffin on top actually fly in after about an hour. Actually, you see two griffins fly in, uh, one of which stops and uh, lands in sort of the nesting area, and the other one which lands nearby and takes on the familiar form of Ferendra, the uh, druid. Okay. Uh, Clark will take this information home and sleep on it. Okay. Everybody ready for the next day? Uh, yep. Give me just a minute. <laughs> um, um, Prina is now taken to lying down on your head and is kind of reading over your shoulder to try to figure out exactly what you're looking at and what you're studying. What is the studying of the night? Uh, the studying of the night is all my spells. Hmm? No, what are you what are you reading that night? Because you were going to spend some time at the at the library back that evening, just reading or researching something. Right, researching. Pichiru, Lord of Sorrow, Master of Deception, and Creator of Chaos. Okay. See if I can find anything. Um, make a history check at this advantage. Hmm. 11 plus 9, so non natural 20. Okay. After a few dead ends, uh, in which you find very disturbingly pages ripped out of certain books um, that you have not looked at recently and the, from the dust on them, nobody's looked at these recently, uh, you find a reference, not to Paturo. That name never seems to appear in any of the books you look through. Mm -hmm. But you find a reference to... Where is he here? <laughs> oh, wrong, wrong page. I knew that. My oh. disadvantage roll is better than my advantage roll. <laughs> 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 All right. I scrolled away from it. Just a second here. Uh, but you do find a, a listing for uh, the creator of chaos, um, who once ruled a part of the world. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the common title that was used was Icon of the Drowned. So creator of chaos was Icon of the Drowned? Yes. Okay, anything else? Um, it describes in some grisly detail some of the things found 
behind where the icon of the drown had been. Um, it describes uh, the walking drowned. People who had been... Uh, uh, oddly enough, it describes them as people who had been brought to justice by drowning, returned to life by the icon. And it describes a battle mm -hmm. in which the icon was pushed out of the world. And reading between the lines of the force that forced this being out of the world, and knowing as you do some of the history that people aren't familiar with and putting it all together, you'd swear that what they're referring to, the force that took the icon of the drowned and shoved it out of the world, also the force that brought the icon into the world. Mm -hmm. Sounds an awful lot like Paloxy. Yeah. It was kind of... <laughs> and who was the author of that book? Author unknown. That In fact, person. it looks like it's a collection of different handwritings. They've written a lot of books. Yeah, I was going to say, they've written a lot of books, <laughs> those guys. It's almost as good as that artist, Tibia. Yeah. yeah. Taba, it's a elven name, I think. Yeah. So it described the battle where the You're icon was pushed scrying, out of the world. Correct? That's right. Okay. You're gonna hmm? Are you going to have scrying? Yep. Okay. The next day, sun rises as it should. Slightly chilly. Seems like there's a fog strangely around. It burns off in the morning. You gather, get yourselves ready. And are waiting for the call. Yep. And Emrin will not have the banner with him, but he will be wearing his armor and carrying a shield on his back. Okay. Um, slightly bulkier robes, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's his is sort of a separate skirt and tabard and that sort of thing. Not so much robes, but uh, okay. Same kind of design that the robes you made had. The sun burns um, off all the fog, rises well overhead. Looks like it's going to be a hot day after all. Still no word from Ferendra. Yeah, uh, we're we're probably staying like a block or so away if there's some yeah. convenient spot because we want to be in the area for okay. when it happens. From what Clark had noted, it's right on the edge of the richer area. Mm -hmm. Are you going to stay deeper in the richer area or deeper in the poorer area? I have an idea for why I can be there. Maybe theirs as well. Um, Amorin is going to spend some time, uh, and if you guys want to go with mm -hmm. him as like just people with him, sure. Um, he's going to go door to door in the richer houses. I assume that's closer to where her place is. I mean, basically, literally one street separates the poorer, the, well, the less wealthy side from the rich side. Yeah. And hers is right on the edge of that street. Okay. Um, in the wealthier areas, uh, Amarin will uh, be going door to door to talk to people and, and uh, ask them their feelings on uh, a temple of healing being in the city. Can I interest you in the Temple of the Delicious Lessons? Witnesses. Exactly. I have these wonderful pamphlets um, I prepared. Not yet. We haven't <laughs> got that made yet. Make a persuasion roll. Ooh, 24. 24. Um, in, uh, it takes a, a while to be going through, and you find oh, yourself yeah. embro embroiled in some of these conversations. And um, he won't be going into the house. It'll mostly be just like short conversations, like politicians do. Well, and in fact, you don't make it into any uh -huh. of the houses. Yep, um, even if you tried. <laughs> the uh, it seems like most of them aren't even home during the day. They're actually doing what they normally would do during the day. Uh, there are a few that are home. The servants come out mm -hmm. and they talk with you for a good twenty minutes mm -hmm. or so, yeah, exactly. uh, and kind of curious about the whole thing and promises to bring it back to the master of the house. 
What are the rest of you doing while he's uh, Clark, assisting? Clark will talk to the group as we have pauses in between the buildings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Are the rest of you hanging around with him and kind of being yeah. his posse for the day? Yep. Yeah, more or less, yeah. Okay, okay. Keeping um, a, I'd be keeping an eye out. For? For just anything that seems suspicious. Okay. Um, yeah, you talked to about a half a dozen houses over a couple of hours. Yeah. And uh, in one case, the, the master of the house is, that, is there and actually comes out to talk to you. Um, but uh, uh, is very curious about the economic prospects of your your religious organization. Doesn't seem to be that all interested in any belief or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, but just interested in in, uh, in you know what 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 are you going to be impacting in the area essentially economically? Yeah, well, I, th I told him that I think uh, perhaps having a uh, uh, a church, uh, a public, well-known church uh, that. Uh, uh, heals the sick and the injured uh, for one could bring people into the city uh, looking either for health or I mean look at Marius's temple and talk about tourism uh, basically it just he says that it'll have a positive impact for the people here and for bringing people in uh, and uh, beyond economically for the the health of the people in the area um, okay you make your case out and he listens to it um, you, he still keeps asking questions about what how mm -hmm. he might profit from it but uh, he at least uh, 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 kind of is well, intrigued um, I do mention that uh, the those who can afford it who uh, have the right materials uh, could have loved ones brought back from the dead if they had died recently enough. Uh, he kind of chuckles at that, thinking you're making a joke, and then seeing your face uh, kind of looks at you askance. Huh. Well, I don't think that's going to be called for, but it's been nice talking to you, and that ends the conversation very quickly. Okay. Uh, after those couple of hours, you were going to... Yeah, Clark will just kind of speak up in between buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, the individual we're looking for, I believe, is in yeah. Second floor in this direct, this facing direction of windows where I saw him last. That isn't the room where you two had noted him before. Mm -hmm. You actually noted him on the first floor. Before. And he took notice of me. Like easily? Easily. Buildings away. Mm. Good to know. Well. So he, I'm thinking that, we may be walking into a trap. Possibly. Or is he looking at us right now? I wonder. I get the distinct impression he has some sort of mystical acumen. Is what I'm saying. Mm. He knows the juju. Well. We know then that he's not some simple animated body. Definitely uh, not. Not if he's acting uh, and reacting. Um, so, um, um, I'll cast Detect Magic as a ritual. Take the ten minutes while we're waiting while Emrun uh, passes out pamphlets. <laughs> what time of day is it now? Like It's late afternoon at this point. It's late afternoon. Um, I'm going to... When, when I feel like it's been too late, I'm going to send a message to, um, Ferendra. Or, I, I feel, I'd ask you two if you guys have a sending, because it would be sure. much more discreet than, um, uh, an animal messenger. I've met her a few times, particularly at the, the well, auction of the griffin egg. Is that enough for me to send her a sending? Uh, you probably aren't as familiar with her as you would need to be. Yeah. Zakis definitely would be. Okay. Um, okay. I don't think Clark's actually met these people. Clark, Clark no. you've seen, and she would have been pointed out before, but that's as close as it gets. Okay. Um, okay. You have spent some time yeah, with Alexia, yeah. but mostly with Ferendra. Yeah. But no, um, ascending, ascending to Ferendra. To for, oh, Ferendra? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know you her, and, and you've you've actually talked with her as well. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, 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 that's what I said. If that would be enough Sorry. to... No, I was thinking it was Alexi. I was distracted by a second. Okay. No, it would have been... Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, you would know uh, Ferendra a bit better cause of, because of the auction, because of all that, too. Yeah. Okay. Um, you spent some time actually getting to know her, and she got time... She actually spent time, more time getting to know you through her. Yeah. Um, so you're just wondering, basically, if the plan's if still on? If everything's okay. Okay. Um, because... What what I do, everybody can hear. Yeah. Well, um... And, and I'd be, like, covering my mouth. Because I know what I can do. <laughs> well, I will, uh... 
Yeah, I don't think that's a ritual, so I can't do it that way. But uh, yeah, I will cast uh, sending. Yep. Um, to uh, Druid number two. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Ferendra? Uh, not to Ferendra, yeah. Um, and just say, uh, hello, uh, my name is Amrun Elisar. I know Elzera. Are things still going okay? okay. Actually, it's still as planned. Okay. So I'll virtually cast the deck magic too, so if we walk into something, I'll see it. All right. Um, the response comes back. Um, Alexia is still in meetings. Could be back any moment now. Everything else ready. Okay. I say uh, she's just waiting for Alexia to come back. Uh, she's still in meetings at the moment, so hopefully it'll be soon. Uh, so wait. Uh, and we, she said everything else is fine. We were waiting until she left for the meet for meetings. When she comes back, and then she leaves for the yeah. flight. Okay, so that okay. because she had yeah. no idea when she uh, was coming back. I understood two different things. Okay, yeah. the we, problem we was the, the problem is if you tried to go in earlier, you had no idea if you're going to be interrupted. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, uh, yeah, it seems like everything's still going okay. So, which is good. It means they uh, even though he saw you, they haven't done anything that would. That seemed odd by okay. uh, Ferendrils or whatever it was uh, point of view. So at least we're not going to be walking into a house full of mercenaries hired to kill us. Yeah. Um, as long as the fire's not started until after we leave, I still get my five gold. <laughs> <laughs> I um, almost prepared firewall just for you. <laughs> almost. But Brenda and Rascal are there. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll just continue on. Uh. Okay. Um, another hour passes, mm -hmm. and you're still moving along, starting to get a little bit nervous because it's getting later into the afternoon, not too far from supper time. Um, and you know that one of the things that Frendra had said is that she, dish, she takes her, her, her supper at home, and she seems to make a bit of a ritual of it, specifically having it delivered for her and her brother. So she's spending that time specifically with him. Yeah. Um, when a, uh, a walnut uh, strikes you on the forehead, very gently, but you look up and you see a squirrel. Um, and the squirrel kind of um, leans down, it's kind of chittering in a way, and then opens its mouth and you hear Ferenja's voice. Mm -hmm. Animal Messenger is a very strange spell sometimes. Um, she has returned. She is changing. We will be leaving in five minutes. I've convinced her already of going on the flight and she seems to be excited about it. I can't keep her any longer than a half an hour, however. So be swift if you can. And thank you. Five minutes, we have half an hour. Okay, well, okay, let's... Now I'll we'll cast the deck magic. <laughs> N no, what? five minutes. Five minutes. What? Yeah, in five minutes you'll have a half an hour. So yeah. In, in five minutes. Did you want to have detect magic already going? Yeah, that's what I okay. mentioned earlier. So you basically every fifteen minutes or so recasting the spell. Yeah. Kind of going through the ritual, stopping and doing it. Just to make sure we don't detect any like divination magic coming from the house. Okay. Um, okay, let's head over and. If things go sideways, there's a, a servant's door in the back of the mansion. I intend to block that with a cart, so I will leave you three to your business and then join you upstairs later. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. As you approach the uh, estate, uh, you hear the loud cry of the griffin. Mm. Probably not the one that Alexi is riding on, but the one that's going with him. Uh, kind of announcing this thing. A yep. little bit of an extra clue for you as well. Yeah, yeah, be keeping an eye out for um, it. Yeah. You see the uh, guards at the front gates. What do you do? Hey, uh, I'm I here. let them lead. I'm here to check on Brenda and Rascal. Okay. Um, it's not something you haven't done before. The, the 
one of the guards is new. He seems to be fairly young, and he's kind of looking at you with a strange look. And the other one just sort of sighs, Oh, you're back again, Miss uh, Miss Elzara. It's nice to see you again. Yeah. Uh, I don't think she'd mind too much. I, I think both uh, uh, the Miss Druid uh, and, and, of course, Madame Ferendrel are out. I think I just saw them flying away, in fact. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, I, I just wanted to check up on them because I, I was away for a while, so... Of course, of course. Uh, who are your friends? Uh, just you've some, met me before. Just some of my, my friends. Oh, I know you. Yes. Uh, the madam takes quite a shine to you. I suppose. Would you wink? I was hoping uh, she was here, but I suppose I can wait for her to return. Hi, ma'am. We're Nailazar. Lazar. Nice to meet you, Mister Hey Lazar. You, sir? Uh, he Is he wasn't there. Uh, uh, yeah. I, well, Clark will be there because he has oh, to get okay. in the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, he won't respond though. Yeah. These are just the people I ha that I travel with. We're just checking in, if that's okay. Okay, make a persuasion roll with advantage. We were the ones who saved the city that one time. I've never seen a trained raccoon. She says it's amazing. It was oh. almost a two, but it's a 19, so it's an 18. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was almost a two and a 12. Uh, you're, you're kind of like laying it on, making it pretty obvious. He seems to be on board. He turns over when you say trained raccoon. I say I wouldn't say it's called as trained damn things a brat. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> just head on over to the the stables, which I guess is now our zoo. And he kind of unlocks the gate, brings it open, lets you all in. Go over and have a look at the the lock on the gate as they go through it. Okay, make a uh, thieves tools roll. Sure. That's kind of your expertise covering that. Fifteen. Uh, Fifteen. Yeah. It's a heavy, uh, a heavy lock. Like a bar kind of thing. Uh, no, actually, it's a it's a key lock. Huh. Uh, strangely enough, um, but the key does look pretty sophisticated. So while it's meant to look fairly simple, it's actually a more complicated lock than it looks. Okay, looks pricey. Uh, it looks very pricey, okay. and do you gather that some of the scratchings on the side are probably also magical of some kind? Uh, the gate is closed behind you. The last thing that guard hears is, A zoo! Now that's an idea! <laughs> <laughs> now do you make your way into the house directly? Uh, Clark's going to head over to the livery okay. and yeah. find a cart. Okay. Well, po possibly a beast of burden to carry it. Uh, I would go... Okay, you do see the younger guards kind of watching you go, seeing this strange thing and having heard this thing about a zoo. Yeah. So there is somebody who might see you. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, so wait, the younger guard is following us? No, he's or? still staying by the gate, but you do notice that he's, he's kind of watching you as you move away. Okay. Kind of a strange group to be talking about and then hearing this talk about a zoo. I mean, it was them that brought it up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so I, I would go out back. I'm like... Yeah. So. Um... Is there do any? we see that the guard is... Yeah, he's he's not making yeah. any play of hiding it. He, he just, uh, he's just kind of turning and watching, kind of curious about this group that's went in. Uh, Clark, if you can get the feed, move to the back door. Yes, sir. One moment. <laughs> Make a deception roll. Can I assist? Sure. Uh, so you roll with advantage. Yeah. That's a 19. Mm. Okay. Uh, it sounds believable. In fact, for a moment you think he's ordering you, and then you realize, nope, nope, okay, I get it. This is the deception. Excellent. I'll cast so you, the arcane eye right now then. Uh, okay, as a as an action. Yeah, we have to, we have half an hour. You're not okay. doing rituals. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it can't even be done, done as a ritual. You might want to wait till we get in the front door so the guard doesn't see you casting a spell. Yeah. I thought. Okay. No. I mean, we can do it right then, so we're not too far in. Yeah. Yeah, you do know that the other guard is still kind of the younger guard, still kind of watching you guys. Yeah. yeah. So, so as soon as we're out of sight, I'll cast that. Okay. Make a stealth roll. Uh, so that's all of six. Okay. Plus, 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 color. plus seven. Okay. Surely his eye can't, eyesight can't see you from now, from here, and you're kind of at the base of the steps when you cast Arcane Eye. Right. Walk we, around we, behind we, him. We would definitely like <laughs> <laughs> block his view. Assist. <laughs> uh, okay, Ro roll again as, a, as an assist as everybody else is like uh, 13. 13, okay. You're, you're thinking that and the rest of them kind of close in behind you <laughs> to block off the vision of you. They, they've seen the this before. Yeah. They know what's going on. 
<laughs> Alright, so you're making your way around yeah, the side? Yeah, so Clark's gonna see if he can hitch up a, a, a beast of burden and wheel a cart around the back of the house and block the... The idea is to block the door. Okay. Um, um, you see a large bear kind of leaning up against the side of the uh, <laughs> the garage, kind of sleeping, sees you coming up, kind of <laughs> looking at you, kind of curious. Clark will sniff back, but then go about his business. Okay. It doesn't seem to pay too much attention to you. It seems fairly calm around people all of a sudden, but there yeah. is a bear there. Yeah. Make an animal handling check as you... Uh, uh, would you like a land vehicles check instead? Uh, sure. I don't know any other land vehicles that aren't hauled by animals. No, so. that, that sounds fair. Uh, 19 and 4 is 23. 23, okay. They're all very well-groomed horses. Everything is in a perfect place. It's a very well-tended uh, space. Okay. So it doesn't take you more than a few seconds to kind of line up a horse, attach one of the buggies to it. Okay. Uh, the buggies are in really good shape. They are really expensive. That's fine. And there are three buggies that are here in an empty space. Um, okay. One of them is obviously for just traveling around town. Uh, one of them definitely looks like it's for longer term travel. It seems to have a little bit more cargo space. Not entirely unlike his wagon, actually. Mm -hmm. Not as reinforced, however. And the third one is an open flatbed, probably used by the servants. Okay. So which of those three are you going to pull around? The uh, does the flatbed have any cargo on it already? or is it empty? No, it's empty at the moment. Well, let's just go for the fancy one. Okay. Okay. You're gonna make an impression. It takes you, you, uh, you know, kind of a practiced edge to having hooked up these vehicles before, and mm -hmm. the horse seems to be calm and content. All right. And you easily start rolling it around the back of the house. Okay. The rest of you going in through the front door. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I would, I would say, like, we're ju we're just gonna wait for them if that's okay. Um. So say to whom? Uh, like. Whoever is at the door, because I okay. believe she does have a butler. She does have a butler, a doorman that greets you at the at the front, um, so. and is uh, curious about uh, about you all. And uh, can I can I help you? Uh, well, we were just here to see uh, the the hippogriff, but we hear that they just left. Ah, uh, yes, I uh, believe the madam was taking it out for a spin. I suppose. Yes, I. Uh, I would never be caught dead on the back of something like that. Seems way too unnatural and scary and flying things. But um, she seems to enjoy it. Yes, she, I, I know Ferendra was saying that she was very excited for that. Um, would you mind if we, we waited for, for them to return? Oh, well, I suppose that would be all right. If you'll follow me to the drawing room, i will lead you into a room that actually, I think the last time you were here was the room you were in. I think both of us have been uh, to the drawing room. Yeah, but I think the, the specific last time, I think this, yeah. is, this is where you remember Alexia being um, friendly Yeah, <laughs> in this particular room. Uh, it is an office, essentially, with a large oak desk um, and her, her assorted, uh, uh, probably scrolls of different deeds and stuff that she's dealt with over, over time, kind of on the wall, some nice, fancy artwork. Yeah. Uh, can I get you some tea or some refreshments? I, I think we're good. Uh, It'll be fine. But thank right. you for your hospitality. Of course. I'll just course. make sure the arcane eye is out in the hall and not... Wait, wait, you haven't... Oh, yeah. You have passed it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's invisible, yeah. so he doesn't really notice. All right. When you find yourselves alone, you have brought the wagon around to the back. Does the wagon, the, the fancy one, reach pretty high up in the air? Yeah, it's a good 12 feet, yeah. Okay. Uh, does that happen to be a good boost level to get to the second floor? Uh, it'd be a jump, but you could probably do it. Okay. Um, Clark will make sure the area is clear of people having their brakes... Okay. Doesn't seem to be anybody out back at the moment. Okay. Uh, you do smell food. They're probably preparing the supper, actually, okay. right in the kitchen, which is right back so there. So they'll too. throw the brake on the wagon so it doesn't okay. charge off randomly for some reason. It'll hop up and then try to scale the wall up to the second floor. Okay. Um, make an athletics check. Sure. Or acrobatics. Depending uh, on how you choose to do it. Athletics is fine. Okay. So you're, you're, jumping, you're jumping with your, your legs, basically. Yeah. Brute force. 16. 16, okay. Climb up to the top of the wagon. It's a little bit, uh, you know, there, there are good springs underneath, which means it actually moves a bit as you get up there. Mm -hmm. And you kind of just pump a couple of times, let the springs start to build up a little potential energy, and then whoop, leap up, grab onto the windowsill of the second floor. Okay. Uh, looking around, doesn't look like anybody's noticed you yet. Okay. Right, we'll proceed inside as soon as we can. Okay. Um, you heave yourself up. The window is closed. You'll have to leave the window open. Tools are good for that. 
Okay. So we're bonus tools. Uh, uh, make a uh, make a thieves tools. Sure. Uh, thieves tools. Uh, 9, 10, 11. 11? It's, a, it's really awkward. You pull out the crossbow and you're kind of holding on by the one hand and kind of trying to find that and then kind of let your weight go onto the, the crossbow. It does creak a little bit, not unlike my chair, <laughs> uh, as, the, uh, as the window pops open a little bit, enough for you to kind of put the crossbow back in your belt and then start to lever it open. Okay. What are the rest of you doing in the meantime? You've been left alone by the butler. Uh, I'm going to hmm. drag the arcane eye to where I remember... Uh, Eliel's room was, but as I cross any door or hallway, I'll just kind of look down it to make sure there's nothing there. Okay. Um, you remember the room across from this was actually where you had seen him before. Okay. Uh, that door is closed. Can the Archive Eye move through walls? Not through walls, it can move through small openings. Though, I'm yeah, sure. like keyholes. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, and I believe while you're concentrating on that, you yourself are blind, is that right? I don't think so. I don't know how that one works. As an action, you can move the eye up to 30 feet in any direction. No limit to how far away. A solid barrier blocks the eye's movement, but the eye can pass through an opening as small as one inch in diameter. So, like, under the door, if there's a jam, if there's, like, okay. a space. Yeah, it says you mentally receive visual information yeah. from the eye, which has normal vision and dark vision out to 30 feet. Okay. And can look in every direction. That's weird. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, make a perception check. Did I cross the door, or am I still look, facing? You're the basically door? hovering in front of that door, okay. looking for an opening. Seven plus. I keep forgetting. What, oh, nine total. Nine. Yeah. The door seems to be solid. It's a sliding door, um, and it seems to have been well made. It's kind of tight on all the sides. Doesn't seem to be an immediate way in there. It is literally in the hallway out in front of you, however. I'll explore the other hallways. Okay. Yeah. I'll just basically go through, like, everywhere to make sure okay. he has he... Like, this he's main hallway yeah. acts as an artery from the front to the very back. As you move towards the back, you notice a, a sitting room. Um, you notice a dining room, which is being set. You see several servants who are working, setting up the, uh, the, the dining room table at this point. Um, you pass by another hallway off to your right where you see just a hallway, several, four or five doors right there. Okay. Uh, as you pass further towards the back, you can actually see uh, one, one servant walks right uh, towards the eye. Is the eye solid? It can't pass through solid barriers, but I'm assuming... I'd be like above, like, head level. I think they're technically supposed to be intangible, but I'm not certain. It just says invisible. Yeah. It might be under specific rules for sensors, because all of those things create a sensor. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, I'll say you kind of maneuver it so that the servant is coming with some of the yeah. the uh, the early stages of the food, some, some little sweets and some uh, other things for the table, kind of almost passes right through the eye, and you kind of move it upward and stare yeah. at them as they're moving through. Um, they all seem to be fairly uniformly dressed, uh, in fact, quite formally dressed. Um, Alexia is obviously used to a very high standard. Um, and then you pass into the kitchen area, you see uh, two or three people working over uh, a stove. One of them seems to be mixing up some sort of batter and getting it ready. Um, on the other side, you see um, uh, sort of the, the storage area and a, one set of stairs. Uh, there was another set of stairs by the very front as yeah. well, you noted before you came in. And that's all you see on this floor. Are you going to go back and yeah. investigate the other uh, hallway, the little hallway you saw? or I'll go up the stairs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these back set of stairs kind of curve uh, and lead you up to uh, an opening. You can see uh, what looks like kind of a, a hamper. Um, you see closets full of, uh, of uh, blankets someone is, is rifling through, probably changing out the sheets for the day. Uh, and then you, you kind of pass through a small door. Uh, there is a small keyhole in this particular door, so you squeeze the, the sensor through. Um, and the small hallway opens up to a, a, a wide hallway parallel to the one that's downstairs. Okay. And you see doors off to the left and right on this hallway. Are they all closed? They are all closed. Okay. 
and looking through the keyhole for each one of them would take not very long, would it? I mean, if I can move at 30 feet within six seconds. Um, yeah. Um, I'm basically just trying to see, find any sign of him before I can... Okay. Make a perception check. Okay. Non-natural 20. Okay. As you move the sensor down, uh, you kind of hover over one uh, one keyhole. It's black. Something's blocking the keyhole. You move down the hallway again. You see another empty keyhole. You see a servant inside stripping off a bed. It looks like a fairly fancy uh, room. You think this is probably Alexia's room. Um, it's got uh, uh, several small statues. You can see some jewelry, which you've actually seen Alexia wear before. Um, in fact, you see some... Uh, one of the dresses you saw her wear at uh, Marius's blessing, which is this incredibly fancy dress with a, a, an actual magical edge to it that, that uh, glittered. Um, you move a bit further down, you find one door that's actually ajar, and you kind of slip the sensor in. And it's a little bit of a strange layout in the room. Uh, it's, it looks like it's kind of primitive. Uh, there's no hard wood furniture. There's actually... Uh, what look like large cloth uh, sacks that have felt over the cloth uh, that look like they're kind of piled up in this strange sort of thing. Uh, make, a sur make a nature roll. Five plus... I read about nature in a book, so ten total. <laughs> <laughs> ten total? Yeah, this looks weird. Um, it's clear that someone stays here, but the layout of the room is entirely different. Again, no solid wooden furniture. It just looks like it's a... Uh, 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 large bags of, of uh, with, with kind of soft felt cover kind of laying around. Okay. You do see a couple of small sacks on the floor as well. And I can't really determine what the contents are? Not unless you can poke into the sacks, which I don't think the no. thing can do. Okay. I'll check out the other rooms, assuming I'm still going on the same roll I, I did before. Yeah, I mean, the, the other couple of rooms look like guest rooms. There's a bit of dust over one of the rooms, probably hasn't been used for a while. Um, the other one looks like it's completely stripped down, but it does look like a guest room. It looks like a guest room which is intended to be completely nondescript. <laughs> Probably for a guest who is barely tolerated. <laughs> nice. So you said there was a third floor? Uh, yes, there's stairs in the back now. Yeah. You can go up those as well. So that's the first staircase I didn't go through, right? Uh, you didn't go through the... Well, you come to the front of the building yeah. again, and you see the continuation of the staircase from the first floor that you yeah. skipped over the first time. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. If that, if that was and that's that a wider, staircase. fancier staircase. Probably the actual people staircase as opposed to the servant staircase at the back, which was narrow. So I'll go up that one. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, actually, you would have also noticed a, uh, a uh, bathroom on the second floor, okay. um, which was made of pure porcelain and uh, quite expensive uh, brass fittings. Wow. Uh, she has running water in her house, which uh, not all definitely marks the, the expensive house from the not expensive house. Yeah. Uh, third floor looks like it is two large rooms on the top. Um, and the, f the first part, um, they look like they're just sort of uh, storage rooms almost. And you see kind of boxes and crates of different uh, things that are there. You're not sure what's in them. You do see some hanging clothes uh, and kind of realize, well, this is probably the rest of her wardrobe. Uh, and uh, yeah, you kind of look at them and go, okay, I remember her wearing that in the spring. <laughs> that one was in the fall. She rotates her wardrobe through this location and probably has them bring all the clothes down. Okay. And the second room? So the, the uh, that's the first two rooms at the front. As you move to the back, it's an open space and you can actually see a bit of sunlight coming in uh, through the ceiling. And uh, make a religion roll. One <laughs> plus... One's a failure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. As you look around the room, it's clear that this is some sort of summoning room. There are candles laid out in patterns around the room. Uh, there are numerous uh, 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 buckets of some sort of incense, probably. Uh, there are markings on the floor that you're not really sure what they are. They look like they've been washed away partially. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's a pattern to the window overhead, um, which clearly seems to indicate some sort of mystical summoning here on the floor. And that's the building. Okay, and I didn't see a sign of Elil anywhere, so I'll just go right back down. Like, zoom. Well, the one thing you did not go into was a room on the second floor, which its keyhole was blocked. Right, that one. I'll go in that one. 
The keyhole is blocked. Mm -hmm. I'll make a mental note of that one. Okay. It's pretty easy to find. Um, it's kind of one of the first rooms you'd, you'd encounter coming up the servant's stairs. That's taken about 15 minutes. What? We have 15 minutes. Well, okay, if it's taking him that long. Yeah. It is taking that, him that long. What are the rest of you doing in the meantime? I'm going to check out that first floor room. Yeah. Okay, so you're walking across the hallway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, moving open the door. Uh, quietly. Yeah, I'm assuming. Or can I still talk as I. Treat? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Apparently, you I can even see. Like, it's not like yeah. most of the ones. It's, it's actually really so powerful. I would have told them ahead of time, like, that the room was yeah. blocked. I couldn't find anything. And while they do whatever they do, I'll go creep around the rest of the building. And once so I'm done. Which are you going up the front stairs or the back? Hmm? No, I mean, whatever I just did. Like, the entire Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so, he, while, yeah. so while the rest of you moving. Because so, he, can, he can see, so he can You go across the hallway around. and see that the room is extraordinarily ordered. It looks as though it's another sitting room, this time without an office in it, so probably where she brings most of the public guests. Um, it looks as though it is uh, finely furnished. Um, those of you going in can make a perception check. I'm going to cast Detect Magic as well. Okay. You climb in the second floor window. Mm -hmm. uh, you find yourself in a room. You can kind of hear a servant off in the distance. And you see shelves filled with uh, uh, towels and blankets and pillows. Linen room. The linen room, okay. essentially, at the back of the building. The perception rolls from you guys? 13. 13 and 19. 19? Okay. Um, you've actually been in this room before, mm -hmm. and remarkably, it looks kind of exactly like you saw it before. Um, kind of normal basic room what you notice is that it looks like that but it looks like it's been reset to that recently you notice that a couple of the chairs around where the, the bottom of the chair is is a little bit of dirt as if it was or a little bit of dust as if the chair wasn't in that position mm. it looks like they reset this room in, uh, fairly recently and is there any magic uh no okay. no appreciable magic in here uh, okay. That's right. Who had when well, you couldn't have detect magic up no. those arcane eyes? I'm no, sorry. I didn't when I first walked in, but it probably expired. Yeah. Well, yeah. it didn't have anything in the it, front door anyway. Yeah, and it's concentration. So. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll mention. Uh, I'll point that out. Basically, it looks like this room has been. Or some of the stuff's been moved recently. Uh, there's no magic in here, though, and I don't. I don't see any place where someone could hide. Uh, not really. It's not. Mm. Uh, it, there's really no closets or anything like that. The furniture's fancy but simple. Yeah. Um, but judging from the way it was moved around, someone probably may have been staying in this room, but they've reset it recently. Hmm. Given the information you've had so far. Yeah. Because this is the room that I saw. This is where he was before. Yeah. yeah. So. After the 15 minutes are up, I'll join them and let them know that there's also a room on the second floor that could oh, okay. be interesting. But actually, well, you see Clark coming in through the, the back window. Uh -huh. You don't see the sensor, so you don't see and him. Jimmy, after we've taken a quick look at that room, I mean, uh, I'll just say, uh, is there anything on the second floor? Yes, there's one room with a blocked keyhole. Okay, we'll check that. And I'll give him directions. I mean, okay. you can also. move, you can still yeah. see. Yeah. 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 But I might crash into things. Or <laughs> so you hear the servants uh, uh, setting up in the next room over with the dining room. And they are coming up and down the hallway all the time. They don't seem to take too much notice of you, figuring that you're already here. Mm -hmm. You must have been supposed yeah. to be here. I just walked through there going, hello. So you're walking through the back? Well, I'm walking up to the second floor, which so there's, is closest. There's, uh, the back stairs would be closest at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you walk into the servants' area. They seem surprised to see anybody coming uh, through and actually all kind of stand a little bit straighter. Uh, one of them nearly drops the plate that they're they're holding and kind of gets oh, us. Oh, um, don't worry about me. Uh, excellent work. Yeah. Sorry, sir, we weren't expecting uh, anyone. And are you following? Or? Yeah. Okay. I'm following too, I guess. All right. Uh, uh, as you kind of march up this, the servant stairs, they all kind of watch you go up these narrow, twist, narrow turning stairs. So I, I'm guessing that that's the way that Frandra sometimes goes as well. Yes. So... Yeah. Uh, um, she's not technically a servant. Yeah. She works with Ale Alexia, yeah. but is, yeah, kind of on that level. So, like, I, I would have gone through the, this area before, yep. so. Yeah, they're still surprised to see, yeah. well, certainly him charging through. Yeah. And then uh, Zach is 
as you just wrote mute and Amanda mm -hmm. with them yep. okay um you hear people coming up the stairs I'm gonna look around okay there is a closet here uh, that's closed off mm -hmm. uh, fairly deep one probably where they store uh, heavier clothing and probably some other things as well as the open shelving okay uh, you hear them coming up or hear, hear people coming up the stairs I have a hunch it's my compatriots because they're pretty loud and there's a bunch of them so and in fact you hear you hear Arun <laughs> saying ah hello just passing through yeah the guy uh, is still up. It lasts for an hour. I just read that. So. Mm -hmm. yep. It's, yep. it's still going. Yeah. It's still yep. going. Uh, but it's kind of hovering in that upstairs room for the moment. Garg will look through that closet just quickly to see if there's anything funny about it and then move into the hallway. Okay. You kind of open it up and sure enough it does look like heavy cloaks and, and different things. Probably the servant's own storage um, and pro probably stuff that they use for um, wintertime here as well as additional linens and, and uh, some silverware and things like that. So we have a secondary storage there. Mm -hmm. um, you move forward to the room where Zakis indicated he couldn't see in. I like haven't been part of that conversation. Okay. Yet. Well, you guys all move upstairs. In, into see, the hallway. You and see oh. Clark uh, <laughs> a, step, a step or two ahead of you. Hello. Yeah. Uh, well, like... Yeah, I'll, just, I'll walk straight over to it. Okay. Can you open this? It's probably... Okay, is there anything magical on the outside of the door? Uh, the the keyhole itself does appear to have some magic. Yes. Don't get it. Uh, it would be. Is there mm -hmm, probably abjuration right now? Okay. Doesn't seem to be anybody right here. I'm going to cast pass without a trace. Okay. Um. Okay. There's some protection magic on this lock. Maybe we should knock first. Can we hear anything from across the hall? Actually, you don't hear anything there, no, other than your own voices. I'll listen to the door. Do I hear anything on the other side? Make a perception check. Mm, 14. Not really. It's a pretty thick door. Okay. Hmm. Zachis? Yes. That time with the alarm spell where we accidentally set it off, what did we do wrong there? This might be an alarm spell. I could dispel it. Did we dispel it that time? Because something we did was the wrong thing. Which time was this? When you were trying to get into your boss's spell book. That was he used knock, yeah. I think. Uh, I forget if I... No, I, I used the spell. Used yeah, I think we used the spell and that set off the alarm. We could use knock, but knock tells everyone within 300 feet mm -hmm. that we've done it. Yeah. Clark um, gets out his tools. Okay. He's got it. Well, physically picking a lock may not do anything about the magical spell that's on there. Um, I'll, I'll wait. Okay. Knocking works. Yeah, I mean, I mean we can actually physically knock on the door just to see if there's any. Clark puts his tools away. Okay. Puts a hand in his pocket on the on the metal ball thing. Okay. As you knock on the door, one thing that becomes very apparent uh, to you is the door is very thick. Mm. Uh, made of solid hardwood, probably. Um, and also seems slightly out of color for the, the, the door jam around it. Uh, it's kind of a thudding mm. when, you, when you end up knocking on it to make any noise at all. There does not seem to be any response from inside. But with the door that thick, they may not even heard you, unless you really bang on it. Mm. Are there any openings? It does not appear to be. It seems to be very, very well fit. Hmm. Clark takes his hand off the manacles and then puts his hands back on the on the tools and yeah. crouches down. Does this seem to be where you saw him from? No, he was out on a window. But, like but can, if you if you I think about it, if you think was? about it, this actually would be the window you would yeah, have seen. Yeah, this, this is probably okay. it. Um, to dispel or not to did, dispel? Did you describe the rest of the rooms, by the way? Some of them. Yeah, I'm assuming I would have been describing them as we walked up. So. Okay. I don't know if I'd mentioned the one on the very top. <laughs> I mean, okay. well, I was staying in one of the guest rooms. Yeah, and oh. in fact, you, when he describes the strange room with the large bags, that's Frender's room. Yeah, that's what I yeah. She's basically built a cave. Yeah. 
Um, it's very druidy. Has it gotten to that 15 minutes yet? This is about the time where things yeah, catch okay. up. So that's at the point there. where you're seeing the ritual room. Okay. I mean, there's, there's a closet on the third floor. Two closets, in fact. Interesting. And a window in the ceiling. This door, I mean, if Eliola wasn't in the first room, on the first floor, then... Is there nothing on the third floor? Closets. The Can window. we inside? Hmm? Are you specifically hiding the, the the room you found upstairs? But I mean, possibly. A s- How similar is it to the circle that was in uh, Tarsal's tower or my tower now? Our tower. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Our tower. <laughs> Little slip there. Yeah. Um, uh, not really that similar at all, okay. but you haven't studied those kinds of circles. There were markings on the floor. I'd like to study them further, but we don't really have the time right now. Mm. Well, what happened when uh, when we had set off, or when he had set off that alarm? Mm-hmm. Uh, he made a, like a loud ringing sound. So the the book, you mean? Yeah. 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 So there was a, a bit of an explosion and a very loud noise. Hmm. Because I remember, like, half the library, like, stuck their heads out of their doors. Well, it doesn't yeah. take much. All it takes at the library is for somebody to be talking too loud. But <laughs> There's yeah. a ghost wandering around. Course, <laughs> whichever we do... We have to do it quickly. Well, whichever we do, it's going to make a loud noise. It may not be... There may not be an alarm spell on it. But, well... I'll, yeah. Uh, actually, both of you can make an arcane roll as you think back on that. What advantage? No. You don't need advantage. You have a plus 13. 18 plus 13, so yeah. 31. <laughs> I get a 24. So the both of you kind of realize that um, you did dispel the binding on the book, but there was a second spell, which, which triggered off. You're only seeing one effect on the door. Okay. Okay. How powerful is it? Can I determine with the 31? No. You can't even see it. Okay. Is there anything visible at the keyhole or at the, the doorknob that would suggest some sort of magical hookery pokery? Uh, if you get real close and take a look at it. Make a perception check with sure. disadvantage. All right. Mm, ten. Ten? It looks like an utterly normal door. They're probably getting upset about nothing. Mm. Up come the lockpicks, then. Dispel level five. Okay, you're casting Dispel Magic? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, as you release the, the effect, it hits the door. To your eyes, nothing happens. To yours, the magical effect dissipates. Okay, the effect is gone. Go for it. Uh, picky locky. Thieves' tools. Mm. Uh, 19. 19. Okay. Uh, actually, it's double the proficiency, so that's 23. 23. So after all the tomfoolery seems to be done, yeah. you finally get to set to work at what you know what to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks as though there's a flap on the inside of the door blocking the keyhole from the other side. Okay. Uh, as if it's not meant to be unlocked from the other side at all. Mm-hmm. Um, you insert your key, your, your key uh, uh, lockpicks. And one of the things that kind of intrigues you is the fact that it feels entirely different from what it looks. Okay. Uh, it's almost as though they designed it to be deceptive but you kind of clue in when things aren't moving quite as you think they are, but the little sensitivity you have in these tiny little tools tells you the right threads to pull. Uh, whatever key goes in this is very complicated, not entirely in, in a way, unlike the front gate, mm. which also has a very sophisticated lock on it, but this one's way more complicated than you've seen on the inside of a house. Okay. After a few seconds, On the second floor, where things uh, should be secure. Exactly, in yeah. the middle of the building. Yeah. Um, you manage to... Uh, work through the tools, and then with a very satisfying, you know, the door is unlocked. Okay. Clark will put his tools away and back away and say, you might want to be sure about this. Well. I'm going to stand in the corner and try to hide from anything from the doors. Mm-hmm. Okay. Make a stealth roll as you as you kind of slink off into the corner with a plus ten, because you still have that yep. effect going. Uh, so that is... 26. 26. Elzera <laughs> is out of sight entirely. If you hadn't seen her move at all, you'd think she never came in with you. 
Well, I'm going to uh, put my shield on and open the door. Mage armor. And <laughs> quickly go in. Okay. So you turn turn the knob and kind of lean on mm -hmm. the door. It is a very heavy door, and in fact, it feels like it's dra dragging along the floor, as though it is also built not to be opened swiftly. Mm. Uh, what is your strength, actually? Ten. Ten. Uh, you lean into it, make an athletics check. Can I help him? You certainly can. Okay. So, do you have advantage? Yep. I got a four. I push on it, room. total. Mm -hmm. I okay. rolled a three and a four. It, it opens very slightly, uh, but then starts to catch on the floor. Uh, it makes a bit of a noise when it catches on the on the <laughs> ground. Can you some help here? You guys suck. Clark will, <laughs> Clark will gently shoulder the door open. Okay. Like he'll make contact and then. So you roll with advantage. All right. I want to see you get a four, just because it'd be late. Well, that was a three, but <laughs> yeah, uh, it's okay. He's got a bonus. I do. Uh, so that's uh, sixteen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with the three of you all leaning up against the door, it swings <laughs> open <laughs> fairly, fairly uh -huh. easily. It does make a bit of noise, uh -huh. uh, which thankfully no one's in the hallway or doesn't seem to be, so no one heard that. But they might have heard you, uh, might have heard the initial squeak where they were pushing open the door. You move the door open. Inside is a room about 20 by 15 feet, the 20 being the width and the 15 being to the, to the okay. outside doors. You see a man kneeling on the floor, seemingly not moving. Uh, uh, all of you recognize the form of, uh, of Alil Ferendral. Mm -hmm. Seems to be dressed in uh, fine clothing. Mm -hmm. You do notice they seem to be disheveled, as if worn and not cared about. The room seems to be fairly empty, at least at first. The floor seems to be moved, uh, or floor seems to be clear. But as you kind of glance around the room, you start to notice things. Um, there is uh, a, a bed which has been pushed up against the, the I corner. Sneak in too. Um, you see the mirror. You see the uh, the brush. You see water pitcher. You see a lot of normal things in a room, but strangely arrayed. In fact, you see some of them swaying slightly, as they all seem to be perched on top of one thing or another, precariously balanced. Some balanced, uh, uh, taking a, a piece of of uh, of wood, probably a slat from the bed, balanced on top of the of the of the water pitcher, precariously holding the the uh, hairbrush on one side and a cup on the other, kind of s kind of swaying ever so slightly. Uh, you see uh, uh, what looks to be a stack of books that is weighed off against uh, what looks to be uh, a marble statue of an elf of some kind, weighed and again precariously balanced this time. Uh, off of a, a uh, what at first you don't really recognize, but at, uh, very quickly you see that there's no curtains on the room. It's probably the curtain rod. Strangely enough, these books are still holding on fairly well, and this marble bust is somehow balanced precariously on this. You see this repeated in, in numerous spaces around the room, these dozens of very well-balanced things. Impressive. Does this look like a Rube Goldberg-style death trap machine? Or are they all Nothing individual seems to instances? be connected. Okay. Nothing seems to be connected. Okay. There are a few more complicated ones where there's literally a uh, a, uh, a bottle holding up uh, what looks to be a uh, another piece of wood, probably from the bed once again, that on one end is also holding something which is balanced this way against a, a simple smaller thing on this side, somehow again precariously balanced. On the floor, uh, kneeling, hands uh, hands together. Uh, head down, you see uh, the form of Alil, and his head kind of turns slightly as if confused. Um, You're not my sister. No. And he looks up at you, and you can see dark pools of black where his eyes would be. Um, my uh, detect magic spell would have ended about five minutes ago, so I would have recast it then. So okay. I spent the second slide. When is you there any magic in the room? Yes. The window is glowing with, again, the same sort of magic the door had. Uh, around the room, there is a small amount of magic, and he himself seems to be emanating a bit of magic. Uh, it seems to be divination magic in his case. Uh, in the other cases, it appears to be... Uh, mm, I'd say abjuration is probably the closest. Okay. 
He seems to be calm, but looking up at you with these strange eyes. Who are you? You remember me. We met in uh, the Queen. Oh, I do. What you happened? put me off balance. Off balance? How do you mean? And he gestures at all the things that are balanced around him. Well, that seems very unbalanced. Those are my pennant. What While are they're doing talking, here? Yes? Uh, Clark's going to just shoulder the door closed behind him. Okay, kind of <laughs> shoving the door closed. Uh, since you already know its weight, I'm just going to have you do it. It's just going to take a second or yep, two to do. Yeah, that's no problem. He's not doing anything else. Uh, as the door closes, and here, as the lock re-engages. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fine. Uh, it's um, a little crowded in here with the four of you standing in there, him there, uh, in this empty space in the middle. Um, as you take in the room, you also notice a sort of aesthetic balance around the room. No one part of the room seems to be filled with more things than the other. Instead, there's almost equal amounts of things, or as equal as can be made with the things found in the room. Uh, at one point, you see uh, a, a curtain being balanced with a shirt. At one point, you see a uh, pencil being balanced with a roll of paper. What Hello. brings you here? Yeah. Did my sister send you? No. What happened? Do you recognize us, Alil? Mm. Recognize me. So many people use that name. I had almost forgotten it. His eyes fade from the black. You can now see his his uh, light eyes, very similar to, to Alexia's. So, you're not here to rescue me, then? I didn't think so. We're here to, to find out what's what? going Where? on. My Where? imprisonment. Where? Here. And to, what would we have to do? What would we have to do to rescue you? Just to take you out of this room? I've seen you roam Allow me to leave through the door. I cannot open it from this side. The window is marked with something that I cannot remove. And I believe that there is a thread. And he points it, and you can see he's actually pointing at the magical thread around the window. Um, There is a thread there that would alert my sister to my passing. And I do not want to inconvenience her, but I do have work to do. Will you set me free? Who are you? I cast Zone of Truth. Okay. The name you have used for me is Alex, uh, Alil, and it is a name that I still answer to from time to time. Everybody has to make a spell safe. What about the other names? Wisdom? Uh, I both probably wisdom. Yeah, 19 would definitely make it. How about a 15? Let's see. Uh, Sorry, ooh. charisma save. 19. Uh, I rolled high. That is cocked. What's the target number? 18. 17 is too short. 18 exactly. <laughs> and what did Zacchaeus get? 19. Okay. Okay, so you two saved. You did not. Did they save? Because I get to know. Uh, it appears as though the effect has worked on that, on Elil. I'm assuming that they failed to save then. Cause mm-hmm. Okay. That's fine. Um, sorry, you were saying... Are you Elil or not? I was. Then there was trouble. And he kind of glances up at Zakis. What? And then there was nothing. And then there was the balance. And I hmm. was returned to life by the Justicar. Who is the there Justicar? Was. The Justicar is the balance maker a being far more powerful than I ever even knew existed. Does that name ring any bells to the Um, religiously trained? mm -hmm. It's not a religion. Um, Make a history roll. Both of us? I'm not trained in it, so I probably... If you're not trained in it, then no, but if you are trained in history, you can make a roll. All right, history... 16 plus 9, so 25. 25? There are a lot of powers that supposedly exist out in the outer realms. One of them sometimes is referred to the balance maker, uh, a being that, from all that you have read, is somehow perfectly in balance with justice. But not all the stories talk about justice being a good thing. Sometimes also referred to as the enforcer of deals or the arbiter of deals.
I was reborn, mostly myself, but better, with purpose. All the things that I had come to know, all the deals that I had made, led me to this. What purpose? I am to set things right. I am to create balance. What that balance? seems rather vague. Not everything is specific yet. I know there is unbalance here in this city that I am meant to fix. Below the city, to be precise. Mm. But my sister does not see it the same way and has kept me confined here. I asked the great balance to find me deliverance. I had hoped that was you. Oh. The uh, markings on the third floor, the circle, what are those for? And then perks up a circle on the third floor. Oh. Okay. That is where my sister worships. Who does she worship? Marius, I believe. Okay. And you kind of flip flip back and go, you know, it kind of does resemble the yeah. rooftop terrace at mm -hmm. the at the uh, Marius' Blessing Right, restaurant. that's where I've seen it before. I Especially knew that. the open <laughs> bar in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Um, hmm, okay. Um. What is out of balance below the city? I am not entirely certain of the complete nature of the thing. Cobalt? Arvax? I was dead. Yeah. Arvax sounds close. Paturo? Mm, I'm not familiar with that name. But there has been a... a breaching. Something has made it into this world. And I am to find it. But I cannot. I can sense that they have been watching for me. Do you know when? I only became aware of it briefly. Uh, my sister will not understand. She will not let me leave. How did she come to find you when you were in a queen? She searched a lot. She believed me to be dead. She started making arrangements. I felt it best that I find her. But as far as she knows, she found me. I was already returned by then. In which arrangements did she make? She was seeking other methods of returning me to life. I could not let her happen let her do that. I would not let her do that. Unfortunately, I was in a position to make sure she didn't. Okay. But there are forces gathering below the city. They have made a breach, and I cannot go to them. I can feel it. They have built a protection that I cannot cross. Perhaps you can do my bidding. Bring balance again. Uh, we don't exactly know who you are yet. No, no offense. But. I am Alil, and something more. I am a servant of the Great Balance. Hmm. Why does your sister keep you here? She does not understand. It is difficult to tell her. Just a momentary thing. I start to cast a spell, but it's going to take one minute, so I'm doing it while they're... Okay. Is it a concentration spell? Uh, uh, no, it doesn't say. I'm casting Commune. It's one minute range self, duration one minute. Doesn't say concentration. Yeah, it would say concentration up to one minute if it did. So, so it's not concentration. Okay. But yeah, so you're why, casting while they're talking. Oh, you're just casting. You're not casting as a ritual. Yeah, uh, yeah, it just takes one minute to cast. Okay. So. My sister does not understand. I'm afraid... I'm afraid that the changes, the balances made in my being have scared her, and I cannot stop them. Will there be further changes, do you think? I do not know the great will, but I suspect that there will be some. 
already I can feel my body changing. I can feel it. I can balance a feather on a finger without trying. I can sense when things are out of balance. I can sometimes tell. It is not perfect yet, but I can sometimes tell when I am being lied to. These are skills I would have reveled back in the work that I did before. Yes. Back before what you had asked me to do had me killed. So, uh... That is out of balance. Who did it? You were out of balance. Really? For what you had done to me, I would ask of you this boon to balance the scales again. I have only uh, re requested a meeting. Surely other people before me have requested meetings. It was dangerous, and I warned you, and it had me killed. For that I we would ask your out. favor to set the scales right. Well, I've never agreed to a contract when we when I made this request. Yet you made the request, which is itself a bargain. No, that was never yes. written on paper. Mm -hmm. A request to have something done is a bargain. And now I am the enforcers of bargains, deals, and requests. And if I refuse? I will have to settle the balance another way. And you will not like it. That sounds like a threat to me, Al. Oh. Unbalance threatens all. The world will come undone if balance is not restored. Only the great balancer can truly bring about this balance. And who this great balancer? It it, it sounds rather fanatical. The, the great justice who is and in now you know home. why my sister has trouble believing me. Well, yes, I. Uh, she, she's not wrong. She is wrong. But she is my sister, and I will honor her as such. And so I have waited. So the spell kicks in? Yep. Um, just for a moment, uh, before I do anything with the spell, I imagine he is telling the truth. My spell, con or my earlier spell confirms that. And it's not a concentration spell either. Mm -hmm. They're neat. Um, and I'll say this uh, out loud. Uh, if you want to that. Uh, and as he was casting, he was basically repeating, Paluxia, please give me your guidance. Um, is it Paluxia? So it was the Justicar? That's one of the names he okay. used. Um, is the is the Justicar an enemy of that which I wish to do? Which is peace and healing and that sort of thing. The answer comes back as unclear. Hmm. Uh, let's say two more. Clark heads to the door. Is the Justicar a god like you? Well, a god similar to you. Unclear. Okay. Hmm. Water can be like that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. That's a well. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the two on yourself. <laughs> Is this entrance into this world he mentions of a creature of evil? That answer comes back as yes. Okay. Uh, and I'll rep I'll mention her answers where it's like, first question, like, mm, she does not know, or she is not certain. She is not certain again. Weird. And whatever it is that he has come here to you have come here to, or you are here to stop this thing that has come in, or aid this thing? I am here to restore balance, and it has created an unbalance, so I will stop it. What ancient do you speak to? The, the being that has come in is evil. Definitively so. So you want to I serve Paluxia. Hmm. I'm not familiar Mother with that Mother of ancient. Earth and Water. Hmm. Uh, you were saying? I will ask the great balance about this Paluxia. Clark will try to leave. Okay. The door has a covering over yep. the, uh, like the, flap the lock. Uh, it's not a flap. It's a covering. It's solid wood. All right. 
In fact, from this side, you can see it actually is solid wood. Hmm. And there's no handle. Yeah. Right. Well, it comes a crowbar, then. <laughs> All right. I'll ask you, Leo. Uh, so, whatever rift thing that happened below the city is considered evil. And you're saying if we deal with this, you'll consider this imaginary bargain paid? If we help get rid of it? Your bargain would be paid. Yes. I think that would be mm -hmm. sufficient. Okay. In fact, he pauses for a moment. The scales will be balanced in our case. Yes. Well, huddle by the door. <laughs> yeah, group huddle. Which is like five feet away, because uh, it's not that big a room. There have been reports from Alistair, I believe, that there was shenanigans going on. Well, yeah. In real world or game? In game. In game? How close is it getting to? Uh, this is about the 35 minute mark at this point. Uh -oh. So back any time. Um, yeah, I mean, there was something going on that we had heard going on under the, the city. Bolts. I think we should let him go. If I can get this door open, I'd be happy. Alexia would be incredibly angry if she found out. I don't know who that is. Perhaps we can. We can. Perhaps we can help her have confidence in him. I mean, I don't know what the long-term case, but short-term, he's out to stop whatever evil entity has come in below the city. And the last time we were down there, it was Arvax, one of the demons. Elio, um, why is the hippogriff terrified of you? Hippogriffs, as far as I know, are very tuned to the living, and I am not quite living. But you're not quite dead. I am on the balance between the two. So are you undead? Can In a manner lie? of speaking. No, he can't lie. Okay. In a manner of speaking. I can Clark right now. If you want to ask me any questions, go ahead. I would look out. <laughs> I do not know exactly what I am, but I know that I am balanced. And if I am not dead and I am not living, I am somewhere in between. Mm. If that makes me undead, then so be it. If, um, close the door. That was still close by itself. Oh. Yeah, I was just thinking enough for us not him not to get out. But we yeah. actually, we're fine. He said you actually went specifically like, okay, close, close the door. Oh so. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will try something. I say, with your permission, I would like to try something that may determine if you are. Undead or something else? Information can help the balance. Um, I'll turn dead. Or turn undead, sorry. Okay. <laughs> 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 turn dead's much easier. Um, okay, so, so yeah, he gets a, a bright flash of blue and white as yeah, you let forth. Like a wave that pushes out. And he gets a wisdom save against 18. It seems to wash over him. Okay, so it has no effect at no all? No effect at all. Okay. I do not believe you're undead. Well, that's good. Well, that is something to be mm. That is one of the things between life and death, so I want to check. Um, I'm going to give you guidance on opening the door. So you sure. get a bonus d4. All right. Clark will attempt to open the door with a crowbar. Okay. The door is very well built mm -hmm. in place. There's almost no crack whatsoever. It's going to be very difficult to, to just heave it open. Right. Also, you did hear the lock re-engage. Yeah. Mm. So you effectively have to fight the door and the lock. Well, I can't get to the lock anyway, because it's on the other side. So nope. Fighting the door. <gasps> there is a glass window here, but as you saw before, there's something about the glass window. Mm. Um, so you go up to the door... Mm. He the, hold the uh, heft the uh, crowbar mm -hmm. and make an athletics check right. versus the door. Athletics. Uh, Twelve. And you get a bonus D four. You do have guidance. Yep, yeah, you get an extra D four. And another four is sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Uh, you jam the the uh, crowbar into the space very slim space kind of working it a little bit mm -hmm. this solid wood door does not give an inch mm -hmm. but the the jam around it starts to soften a little bit okay you've made no progress on the door but you do have the crowbar in place right this is going to be hard uh this thing is solid 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 um you know we 
It also feels like it's built like a prison. We could just like tap the alarm spell and bring her over. I mean, we probably want to talk to her about this anyways. Because if we if we just let the guy go, she's going to start hunting him down. True. Mm -hmm. uh, we gotta we have to talk with her and try to convince her. I think. There is another balance. Hmm? Yeah. I have been concerned about alarming my sister if I were to leave. But you can tell her. Then I can leave. And he leaps towards the window. Uh, I will cast Entangle. Ooh, okay. Uh, natural 20 on the uh, acrobatics check to dive out the window. Um... It's, it is an action, so... So roll initiative against him to see if you can manage to do it before he gets to the window. Thirteen. Are you going to go first? I got a two. Yep, so I well. need... Uh, da -da -da -da, a strength saving throw of a fifteen. Okay. That is a nineteen on the die. Cool, I as tried. The, as the, uh, the, the roots kind of grow up out of the floor itself, wrapping around him... He just sort of twists and turns and actually falls out the door backwards, looking at you all placidly as the window breaks. And you see... Uh, no, actually, Detect Magic is a concentration, so that one's... Nope, wait, no, I you have three effects that are going on the same uh -huh. side. So yeah. you see as the as the uh, the power fluctuates around the, uh, around the window and kind of spreads out in all directions. Um, there's nothing audible or visible, but you kind of uh, you do the understand the effect of an uh -huh. alarm spell as he uh, falls backward out the window. Okay, I lean out the window and try hold person. Uh, okay. He makes a wisdom save against 18. He does indeed. Yeah. Well, hopefully he doesn't, but... Mm -hmm. uh, what, was your, what was your bonus, or was your... 18. 18, he does not make it, which means stiff, stiffly, without being able to save, he crashes into the ground. I am going to well, turn into... Sorry. An I'm trying to wait till he hits the ground. Okay. Uh, and yeah. then just stop him from moving. Then the nat 20 means he lands on his feet without any trouble. That's twice in a row. That's weird. Uh, so he doesn't take any damage, uh, but only steps a couple of steps away. He's well balanced. He's very <laughs> balanced. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to give him advantage on acrobatics rolls from now on. Yep. That makes a hell of a more sense. <laughs> Although um, I rolled deep, a natural 20 both times I've rolled an acrobatics roll. Probably so, uh, it's kind of It's very creepily uh, s uh, situational here. Uh, I have, please wait to talk with her. You kind of have to shout that out the window because he's two floors down. Well, we're on the second floor, so he's down like I 15 suppose, or yeah, 20 feet. Yeah. Um, although, I mean, I'm not being quiet about it either. Okay. Uh, uh, I will try to climb. I uh, will wait, does the whole person have a save per round or not? I guess it was for yes. Time. Yes. Okay. Um, then that roll succeeded. Okay. Uh, as you see him held there for a moment. I, I would have when he had that done. Because I know hold put person as well, I mm -hmm. would have entangled because I know that it does okay. get a save. Uh, yeah. Well, he would have gotten a save at the end of his turn. Yeah. Yeah, but. So no, yeah, yeah, you go before he does. Yeah. yeah. So I would have done that. Okay, so you're going to entangle him while he's there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So he's paralyzed, so he can't make a strength saving throw. Right. Uh, does it automatically fail on those rolls? It does automatically fail on those. Uh, well, he, yeah, he's held. I, I will um, pull up this here. Uh, Paralyze. Automatically fail strength index checks. Yep. Yep. Uh, All right. As the as the ground kind of around him swirls, you hear the distant sound of a hippogriff screaming. Um, and you probably figured that's probably your friend telling you that suddenly Alexia is on her way back. Yep. Um. So, uh, does that? What is the effect of that spell? Uh, grasping weeds, uh, 20 foot square, starting on a point within range. For the duration, these plants turn the ground into difficult terrain. Uh, the creatures in the area, when you cast a spell, must, must succeed a strength save or be restrained by the entangled plants until the spell ends. A creature restrained can use a, its action to make a strength check against your spell DC um, and free itself. Okay. So. Uh, he so is trying and to then on his turn, it. he successfully gets out of the hold person. Yeah. Okay. But right, that, at, the, the, at the end of his turn. Yeah. yeah. My action, it's only 15 feet. I'm going to jump down. Okay. Make an acrobatics check. Okay. Yeah. Guidance. No, I can't do that. 
That's her reaction, sadly. You do realize you cannot avoid the entangling vines. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with that. I get a... Uh, it's just difficult 19. Yeah. Oh, it's not when a person steps into the area? Nope. Okay. Uh, uh, ni- 19. Yep, yeah, you arrive with, or you land without any difficulty. Um, I'm trying to get in front of him so I can just kind of look at him and say, please, if we, hand- if we handle this with your sister... She will never let me go. If we can do this, if we talk with her and let her understand what you are now, whatever you, uh, you are very, you are almost certainly one of the things either that I am or that I was. Uh, if we can bring her on your side, then it will make your job much, much easier. Make a persuasion roll. I will say at the end of that. Plus, we have someone who she'll probably listen to. And I look at Zagos. I'm like, we are in so much shit, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> make, uh, make it with advantage, because she's oh. trying to help. Good, because I kind of rolled crap on that one. 22. 22. Uh, he looks at you, and there's this weird expression that passes his face. It's almost judgmental. I see a path to balance. But I do not like it. My sister will be in danger. But I will try it your way. Everyone in this city is already in danger. There are so many evils we are trying to stop. I but have, I will help you if I can. And I think if we if you do not square this with your sister, she will be in even more danger as she tries to hunt you down and stop you. Very well. He looks up the sky. I will try it your way. And you can see one hippogriff with uh, Alexia diving in this direction. You can see that she's actually left Ferendra behind. She's managed to inspire the uh, the hippogriff to try to travel even faster, coming straight at you. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session. Mm-hmm. I'm just looking out the window. It's like I'll be standing next to him, looking in her direction. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's it for tonight um, we are not entirely decided about what's happening next week but I think that ch- the, the the 99% chances we're going to take next week off it is a holiday weekend so we're all going to celebrate a little bit we'll be back in two weeks also I get to be extremely jealous because Nax over there yeah. is going to Dragon Con which I would love to be at have a great fun time uh, Nax I will do my best I'll try to finish my shit before I leave <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, how will we end with uh, people? Where can they find more stuff, and what should they do? So, social media first. Uh, you can find our Facebook page. It's just Le- Legend of the Drowned Isles. Uh, we've also been using the hashtag LOTDI, which is the beginning of our title um, for anything that we post. And there is also a Facebook group that we are fairly active in, and. Uh, talking about the game and stuff. Um, I am Maria and Akimi in the YouTube uh, comments. And I think that's my head. Okay, for YouTube, we turn to Clark <laughs> slash YouTube, Jody. If you like this video, please hit like, uh, subscribe if you'd like to see some more, and hit the bell for notifications so that when we do put new videos out, you see them first. And share it. And please share yeah, it. We'd love, it. To, share uh, the love to hear more about other people listening and enjoying the show. Thanks, folks. Have a great week, and we'll see you in dire peril next time. Bye-bye. Bye.